What's up guys Chaos Shinobi here. This is what if Naruto is born with sun and moon seal. Summary, Hagoromo choose Naruto to be his reincarnation blessing Naruto with his power of sun and moon and other abilities. Chapter 10, Chunin Exams Part 2 The group of Chunin hopefuls stood gathered before the gate that blocked the entrance to the next area of the exams and Anko stood in front of the gate. Welcome to the forest of death, Anko said cheerfully. Before we begin the exams you need to sign these waivers. Why are we signing these? A random Amazian unasked. So if you die Konoha can't be held responsible. Anko replied as if she was talking about the wavered were handed out and everyone signed them. Alright, here are the rules. You are spending, at the most, the next five days in this here forest. What about food? Choji asked. Scrounge some up, this forest is a treasure box of nature. Anko's smile widens. But be careful as some of them are poisonous and also you might find that you will be hunting only to end up hunted. Anyway before you go and you will be handed a scroll, one per team, with either heaven or earth written on them. Your objective is to get these opposite scroll and reach the tower in the center within 5 days. Sounds like fun, Naruto said and a kunai was thrown at him but Naruto caught it and tossed back futon chakra coating the kunai. Yeah ha ha ha, no. You're a tough guy be but careful cause tough guys are usually the ones who end up dead first. This place does not scare me whatsoever and, word of advice, the next time to try to scare someone try my weak teammates behind me because, news flash, you don't scare me whatsoever. Anko brings every team to a gate and then after 5 minutes a buzzer goes off and the gates open up and everyone rushes in. After a few minutes Naruto looks at his teammates. I need to take a nature break so I'm going behind those trees, be right back. Naruto walked behind the trees, after a few minutes he walked back out, Sasuke threw a kunai at him and Naruto dodged. You're not Naruto, so whoever you are come out. Sasuke glared. What do you mean? Of course I'm Naruto. No, you're not, for three simple reasons. 1. You've got the kunai holder on the wrong leg, 2. Your hair is the wrong color of blonde, and 3. The real Naruto is standing right behind you. The now I identified imposter turned around to see Naruto standing there blade drawn. You've got some nerve, Naruto said then he gripped the imposter by the throat. So got a scroll on you? And no. Then you have nothing to bargain with. Naruto stabbed the imposter though the heart killing him. Naruto pulled out the blade out and flicked the blood off and sheathed the blade. Why you killed him, Sakura said shocked. Of course I did, he'd do the same in my position. You're a monster. We are Shinobi Sakura, we cheat, lie, steal and kill. This world has transformed us from children into warriors. If you can't handle that fact then leave the shinobi program. Sasuke-kun he's wrong right? No he's not. Sasuke replied. In fact, male shinobi have it better than Kunoichi. Naruto continued, if a shinobi is defeated by another ninja they are tortured for information and when they are no longer needed they are killed. With a Kunoichi it's not that simple. If you, Sakura were captured by the enemy you would be tortured or information and then the shinobi who captured you would take their turns raping you. You would be violated over and over until they got bored of you and either killed you or sent you to a whorehouse where you would do anything they asked you to do until you died. That is why most kunoichi have a backup plan in case they are captured or they become strong enough to fight off their captures. So after that, we need to come up with a password to know for certain each of us is who we say we are. Okay Sasuke-kun, Sakura said. Okay, here's the question, when does a ninja strike and the answer will be a ninja waits till the time is right, when the enemy sleeps and drops his guard. When his weapons lay forgotten in the stillness of the night, that is the moment for a ninja to strike. Got it? Got it. Sure whatever, Naruto said, just then a huge wall of wind came ripping through the trees and all three again embraced themselves. Few Uden ninjutsu, alright let's see how they fight on their own, Kamue. Naruto vanished into his pocket dimension but the dust covered his escape. Sakura and Sasuke dived into the bushes, after the wind died down they both emerged. Sasuke-kun are you okay? Sasuke drew a kunai and his glare stopped Sakura dead in her tracks. First answer the question, Sasuke said. When does a ninja strike? Right, a ninja waits till the time is right, when the enemy sleeps and drops his guard, when his weapons lay forgotten in the stillness of the night, that is the moment for a ninja to strike. Sasuke lowered his gun eye relief evident on his face and just then Naruto walked into view. Hey, you guys alright? Naruto asked then he had to dodge a kunai thrown by Sasuke. What the heck Sasuke-kun you didn't even ask him the question. Think about it Sakura has Naruto ever cared our safety? Oh, yeah, you got a point. Well I'm impressed you haven't dropped your guard. The imposter said and dropped their henge revealing a kunoichi and she licked her lips. Who are you? Sasuke asked glaring. Oh that doesn't matter. The kunoichi drew an earth scroll from her kunai pouch. Sakura looked at the scroll and the enemy smiled. 
Oh you'd love to get your hands on my earth scroll it would go so nicely with your heaven scroll. The Kunoichi placed the scroll over her lips and swallowed it. Well when this is over, one of us will have both scrolls and the other, will be dead. She then unleashed a monstrous amount of ki and both Shinon froze as they witnessed their own deaths. Oh I'm so disappointed in you Sasuke-kun I thought you would be more capable than this. Come on Sasuke. Sasuke managed to reach into his kunai pouch and grab a kunai. Oh, now what? Sasuke's hand was still trembling. At this rate I won't be able to throw straight let alone get a kill shot in. Sasuke thought as the kunoichi pulled out two kunai and placed them in between her fingers. I'll make this quick, but I don't have to tell you that you've seen it. I've got to move. Sasuke raised his kunai. Move. Naruto plunged the kunai into his leg just in time to grab Sakura and jump out of the way before the kunai hit where his and Sakura's heads were. Interesting, he blocked the fear with pain, maybe this prey isn't so helpless after all. Naruto watched the whole thing from a tree. So this is how the great Sasuke Uchiha deals with a powerful foe. Naruto thought shaking his head in disappointment. Disgraceful, well I guess I've observed enough, time to step in. Naruto tossed a Hiroshin kunai at the kunoichi who dodged and then Naruto appeared right in front of her. Rasengan. Naruto slammed the spiraling orb into the the shocked kunoichi's stomach. She was sent flying back and slammed into a nearby tree and shook of her shock and looked at Naruto who was, in that moment, the spitting image of his father. What the heck, you want a real fight? Then let's dance. Naruto, I was wondering where you were. Can we cut the crap Orochimaru? I know it's you your chakra is just as foul as I remember. Well. We've never met in person yet you know me, but to be fair I know who you are or at least I knew your father. You know who my dad was? Don't take me for a fool, anyone with half a brain could draw the connection between you and Minato. Good then I can unleash the Hiroshin without fear. Naruto sends several Hiroshin kunai at his Orochimaru, teleports to one of them, kicks Orochimaru sending him flying back. While he's are still in the air, Naruto creates a cage bunshine which teleports to the kunai around Orochimaru, slashing him repeatedly. Then Naruto teleports behind Orochimaru and ended the combo with a Rasengan. Hiraishin, Jiku Shippu Senko Ren no Dan, Zero Shiki. Flying Thunder God, Space Time Hurricane Flash Sequential Steps, Style Zero, I really need a better name for that. Yes, yes you do, Lobo said. Naruto smiled satisfied with his work until Orochimaru bust from the ground to stab him with the Kusanagi blade but Naruto let the attack pass right through him. Naruto jumped away and weaved a hand sign. Katan. Ryu and Hokano Jutsu, Naruto spat out the fireballs at Orochimaru who dodged but was still burned severely then Orochimaru rushed in and started swinging with his blade but Naruto dodged every blow with these. And Naruto was smiling as he dodged. I'm moving so fast that to most John and I'm invisible so how in Kami-sama's name is he dodging so easily? Orochimaru thought frustrated. Naruto can you ask him to speed up I'm falling asleep just watching? Lobo asked. Sure why not? Naruto replied as he vanished and called out at the base of a tree. This may seem a little off topic but could you move faster, cause I'm falling asleep here? Orochimaru was in shock but his shock turned to rage and he weaved signs. Kushios, Edo Densei. Summoning Jutsu in Pure World Resurrection, a Akinfin rose up with the kanji for Red Death and Orochimaru smiled. What will you do now Naruto-kun? You must fight your own mother who was a mistress of the blade. Naruto's light-hearted smile turned to a look of pure loathing as his mother walked out of her coffin. Minato? Kushina asked shocked. Try again, Kachan, Naruto said sadly. Naruto? Kushina started to run and hug her son but Orochimaru made a hand sign and Kushina was halted in her tracks. As touching as this family reunion is, you're not here to catch up, Orochimaru said then he pulled out a kunai with a tag attached and walked towards Kushina but Naruto smiled. You've made two deadly mistakes Orochimaru, the first was defiling my mother's grave, the second, resurrecting her at full strength. Naruto activated his Rinnegan and weaved hand signs. Ghetto, Rin Tensei no Jutsu. Outer path art of Rin rebirth. Kushina's started steaming and the cracks in her skill started closing and the black in her eyes turned to white. Kushina clenched her fist as her control return. I'm alive, Kushina said shocked. Impossible, Orochimaru said only for Kushina to spin around and slice him across the chest. Kasan, catch. Naruto shot as he tossed his sword to Kushina caught it and entered the dual wielding reverse gate stance. Let's skin us a snake Soichi, Kushina said as she smiled. Agreed. Naruto and Kushina charged in and started attacking with unyielding ferocity and Orochimaru found himself at an overwhelming disadvantage. I can't keep up. Orochimaru thought in horror as he took blow after blow. There is no flaw in their attack Persian and where one attack is dodged another hits me. 
Just then the cage bunshine that he sent dispelled and Orochimaru smiled as he learned that Sasuke had been branded with the curse mark. Orochimaru leapt back and laughed. What's so funny to Bane? Kushina growled. While I didn't get to make everything that I wanted to happen occur, I did accomplish my main goal. Branding Sasuke-kun with my curse mark. Bastard. Naruto growled and Naruto formed a Rasengan and Orochimaru went to Shunshine away but he got hit by a black sphere which ripped right through him Orochimaru flew back coughed up blood. Damn I missed. Naruto cursed, Orochimaru regurgitated himself and Naruto looked at Orochimaru who was dangerously low on chakra. I will see you later when I have gained the secrets of eternity. Orochimaru SNK into the ground and disappeared. Well that went well, Kushina said then she turned to her son. What was that jutsu you used it looked like me not Okun's Rasengan but you threw it. On my Oton, Rasengan, basically I use on my Oton chakra and a Jukin ninjutsu that allows me to shift it through space and make it hit my foe at such speeds that not dad's Hiroshin could dodge, but the thing is it's difficult to aim so for a first time hitting my target was pretty good even though I missed my intended target. Where were you trying to hit? His head. Well now that I'm alive again I need to figure out where I'm going to live. Why not dad's house? I live there and the blood seals should still recognize your blood and chakra. Good point, have you made any changes? Yeah, I made the room you guys made for me bigger using Makutan and Cage Bunshines so that way when Hinataheim moves in we can have plenty of room. The master bedroom is unchanged and when I find a way to resurrect Tosan you and he can enjoy it the same as you did when you were both alive. I've expanded the courtyard to encompass a garden, a hot spring, both male and female sides, I've added training rooms. Seal testing slash creating rooms and a room to train with Bijou power in. Whoa, well I'm gonna go settle in and talk to the old monkey about watching the rest of the tuning exams. Kushina shunshined away the Naruto ran toward where he sensed Sakura's chakra. Hinata and teammate. Hinata and her team were dashing through the forest when a barrage of lightning ninjutsu flew at them. Hinata grabbed her teammates and jumped to the side, then three kumonin landed in front of her. Well, well looks like we found our target boys. The middle said and his friends laughed. Come on in, how? Kiba asked, Hench, they must have used it to enter the exams and use the opportunity to try and kidnap me, Hinata said. Whoa, smart and beautiful, I'll enjoy fucking her brains out. The nin on the left said, Shino, Kiba, run, Hinata commanded. It's me they want they'll leave you two alone, but. Shino started, go. I'll catch up. Shino and Kiba ran off and Hinata activated her Byakugan. Don't bother girl. We're the anti Huga squad we specialized in hunting and capturing Huga. The nin on the right said, That may be, but, I'm not your average Huga. Hinata jutted out bones from her bums. Now, who wants to die first? Hinata charged in at blinding speeds and slammed the nin on the right with her bones and kicked him away then fired said bones into his stomach and he quickly turned to ash. Next, Hinata said smiling the other ninja jumped back and she weaved hand signs. Katan, Ryukano Jutsu. Hinata exhaled a wave of fire and both nin scattered Hinata took advantage of this and punched one in the chest rupturing all his internal organs killing him. Hinata turned to the last one only to see he wasn't there. Surprise! The last once called from behind her and went to knock her out only to be blocked by a blue ethereal hand. You should watch your six, Haim he almost had you. Naruto's voice called out lecturing. I knew he was there, you just wanted to show off. Hinata counted. Yeah, I did, Naruto laughed as he walked into view. The Kumo Nin jumped back and started weaving hand signs only to lock eyes with Naruto and Naruto smiled. Tsukuyomi. One second later the ninja collapsed. So what brings you here Naruto-kun? I was on my wave to rendezvous with my team when I sensed three Jounin level chakra signatures converge on your location and thought I might help out. Well I'm gonna go rendezvous with my team, and by the way, that ninja you paralyzed has a heaven scroll. We need earth, you, heaven, so I'll take it. Hinata took the scroll and ran off Naruto jumped off to where several chakra signatures were converged on one location. When he arrived he saw Rock Lee on the ground ear bleeding and barely conscious, Shikamaru and Choji were in the bushes unconscious. The Mumiato nin rap teammate was trembling in fear and the other nin was clutching his right arm in pain. What Naruto saw next enraged and disgusted him. Sakura was naked and unconscious with a smile on her face, the Ado Kunoichi was unconscious and the tree hollow still clothed. Sasuke was pantless and was approaching a terrified Dino. Sasuke had black marks over his neck and what little Naruto could see of his face. Naruto unleashed a typhoon of killer intent and focused it all on Sasuke who froze in fear. Just what the hell do you think you're doing? Naruto asked in a deadly whisper right behind Sasuke. Sasuke turned his head shakingly and looked at Naruto and his fear diminished some as he saw Naruto and he smiled. Don't mind me loser I'm just restoring the Uchiha clan, Sasuke said insanely. Naruto turned livid. 
by raping a fellow Konohan in and a foreign Kunoichi? Oh please, the way these two throw themselves at me, they've been asking for this for a long time. Naruto gripped the back of Sasuke's neck applying a paralysis seal and dragged Sasuke away from Mino and threw him on the ground. Sasuke Uchiha, you are guilty of the heinous crime of rape. You have been brought before the Uzumaki clan council and your punishment is as follows, the application of the blood curse seal to be twitten in your blood and carved into your flesh without the deactivation seal being drawn under it, a sterilization seal to be added to your body to prevent and kill your ability to reproduce permanently even though artificial insemination, an anti-unconsciousness seal to prevent you from losing consciousness for any reason except when you can no longer stay away from lack of sleep and even the you will only get 8 hours before it forces you awake. A chakra and muscle degradation seal that, when I chose to activate it, will bring your chakra to civilian levels and your strength will be that of a child's. And finally two anti-seal removal seals to prevent any of the previously mentioned seal from ever being removed. Your sentence is to be carried out instantly. Naruto got to work applying all the sleaze and finished carving the blood seal into Sasuke's right shoulder who screamed in pain as Naruto applied the seal. Naruto then kicked Sasuke breaking two ribs and laughed cruelly as Sasuke screamed in pain. This is only a minuscule fraction of the pain you will feel if I chose to activate the blood curse seal so don't tempt me. Naruto walked away from Sasuke and clapped his hands together and then whispered. Band Tsu Sozio no Jutsu. Creation of all things, Naruto created a new outfit for Ino and he started to walk towards her but Ino scream, stay away. Naruto halted in his tracks and he closed his eyes and then a few seconds later Hinata arrived and she looked at Naruto. Naruto-kun. Create a wood dome around the base of the tree I'll take care of the rest. Naruto noted and then handed the cloths to Hinata and make the snake hand seal. Makuten, Mokuhohiki. Wood style, wooden wall, Naruto created the domed wall and Hinata stepped behind it. It's okay Ino, he can't hurt you anymore. Hinata handed Ino the outfit who sniffed and muttered, thank you. Ino changed into the outfit while Hinata stroked her hair saying soothing words to help calm Ino's nerves. After a while Hinata and Ino walked out and she froze when she saw Sasuke. Don't worry he can't move, Naruto said and Ino relaxed slightly. As soon as I am done healing your teammates I'll take him and Sakura and head to the center of the woods and I will inform Hokage of Sasuke's actions and he will pass judgment and, Sasuke, don't think for a second he'll be lenient on you just because you're a Nuchiha he may order me to activate the blood curse seal and you can understand why Yami-sama favored the Uzumaki clan and taught us that seal, Naruto. Ino said softly, yes? Naruto turned to her, his eyes full of concern. I, I'm sorry for screaming at you. It's okay, you were scared, your best friend had just been raped and you were close to sharing the same horrible fate. Thank you Naruto, I I was so scared, I couldn't stop him. Ino bust into tears and Hinata wrapped her arm around Ino. There, there, Hinata said and she let Ino cry on her shoulder. I'll be leaving now take care. I've made sure that Sasuke won't hurt anyone like this again. Naruto dressed Sakura in a horrible outfit and then created two cage bunshines and they grabbed his two teammates and left. After a while he arrived at the central toe and unrolled both scrolls and in a flash of smoke Iruka appeared and looked at the Janan. Welcome Team 7, I'm here to congratulate you on completing the second stage of the Chunin exams, Iruka said Sasuke looked smug, Sakura was exhausted and relieved, and Naruto was impassive as he looked at Iruka. Hey! Iruka sensei yeah has any other team made it back yet just a team from Suna they beat you by about two hours ha Naruto cackle in your face Kara told you we'd make with three hours you owe me 1200 Rio Iruka sweat dropped at his former students actions but opened the door to let them inside Naruto taught shower to wash himself off and then went off to find Gara. unsurprisingly he found them in the kitchen getting food when Gara saw Naruto his face fell and without a word pulled out his wallet and handed Naruto 1200 real which Naruto pocketed then grabbed something to eat and sat down next to the San siblings. So you and Gara know each other? Tamari asked tried to break the ice. Yes, I met Gara four months ago when I was on a journey to meet my fellow Jinchuriki. Why is Gara so nice to you when he threatens to kill his own siblings? Konkuro asked. Oh that's all an act, Gara said as he munched on a cookie. Tamari and Konkuro spun and looked at him in shock. Or at least it has been for the last four months, so. You're not homicidally insane? Tamari asked. Not anymore, Shukaku and I get along pretty well now. So then those Janan in the forest, did you want to kill them? Konkuro asked. Yes, I did. Why? Because no one threatens to rape my sister and gets away with. At the word rape Naruto's face contorted with rage and his cup shatters in his hand. Tamari, Konkuro and Gar looked at him shock. What's wrong Naruto? Tamari asked. 
Naruto takes a slow deep breath to compose himself. I'm sorry about that but, that word hits a little too close to home right now. Why? Gara asked. My teammate, Sakura Haruno, was raped in the forest of death, although if you asked her she'd say she consented. By who? Tamari asked. Sasuke Uchiha, my other teammate. Why would she say she consented? Because she's in love with Sasuke. Naruto took another deep breath. I'm lucked I showed up when I did or they would be three kunoichi raped by Sasuke Uchiha. Gara looked at Naruto concern and fear in his eyes, so. You're Jinchiriki Naruto? Konkuro asked eager to change the subject. Yes I am. Which bijou? Tamari asked. Jubi. Jubi, I thought that the bijou only went up to the QB. Konkuro asked confused. No, they are the result of the Jubi's chakra being split up into nine parts by the Rikudo Sanin. How do you know all this? The Uchiha have a stone tablet that has been passed down for generations it still exists under Konoha. On it, a secret that was written by the Rikudo Sanin ages ago. To be able to read it, you need a special ocular power. By using the Sharingan, Mangekyo Sharingan and the Rinnegan, in that order, you can decipher it. So you were gathering the Bijou to become the acquire the power of the Jubi and become its Jinchuriki? Tamari asked. No, I was already the Jubi Jinchuriki when I met Gara. Naruto got up and stretched. Well I wanna get some some sleep so I'll see you guys later. Oh and if you see Sasuke, don't kill him, that right goes to either Hinata or myself. Chapter 11 Chunin exams preliminaries. Time skip five days later. The eight teams that had made it to the finals were gathered in the tower where there was a gigantic pair of arms making the rat hand sign. 24 people, well I did say I'd half the numbers but I thought there would be less than 10 left, oh man. Anko thought, congratulations for making though the second exams, Sarutobi said then he began explaining the reason why the Chunin exams existed while Naruto scanned over the competition. So all the Jinchuriki teams made it, as did all the rookie nine, Oh hey Neji and his team made it too cool. Then there's Kabuto and his team, I have to assume that they all work for Orochimaru which means if I kill them in a fight and I will only help our side, ok now for the gathered Jounin. Naruto thought as he looked at the Jounin one by one. So we have, Kai, Kakashi, Asuma, Gurunai, some other guy probably working for Orochimaru too, then we have some Jounin from Takifu's sensei no doubt, then we have some guy from Suna so he's Gara sensei and then, wow, really Orochimaru. Worst. Disguise. Ever. Then we have Anko and Iviki, some guy with a coffin and Enbu with red hair and, really Kachan? Oh never mind, and then, oh that's it. Okay time to pay attention. Naruto looked at Sarutobi. Now there are too many of you so we have to have a preliminary fight exams right now. The coughing Jonin said and several Jinan groaned and complained but the Jonin continue. If you feel you are unable to continue please let me know and you can pull out without affecting the rest of your team. Kabuto raised his hand. I'm done my chakra is low and my ear is still damaged from earlier, Kabuto said. Kabuto Yakashi, right? Kabuto nodded. Alright you can go. Hayate did a quick head count. Alright since we have an odd number one of you will get a free pass into the finals. The computer spun and spat out Konkuro's name and Konkuro smiled at this. Alright Konkuro you have a free pass, now the rest of you will have to fight in one on one matches. Now for the first match. Names started spinning and then generated two names. Alright the first match will be Sasuke Uchiha vs Yoroi Akuto, do you have any objections? No. Yoroi responds. And Uchiha never backs down. Sasuke said. Alright will all others please go to the second floor and wait for your turn, Hayate said and everyone walked upstairs and then he jumped back and called. Hajime. An. Match goes to canon except Naruto doesn't say anything, winner Sasuke Uchiha. Then he looked at the computer which started spinning with names and landed on Fu and Misumi Tsurugi. Alright my turn, Fu said and she jumped down and looked at her foe. Alright, Hajime. Fu weaved hand signs. Katan, Zukaku. Fire style, searing migraine. Fu fired out a huge wave of fire at her foe who dodged and charged in and wrapped his arms and body around her. Using my chakra I can stretch my limbs and still retrain their strength to give up or I'll snap your neck. Misumi said Fu smiled and gnashed her teeth creating a spark and then she exploded basting Misumi back severe burns on his arms and legs. Gotcha, Fu said. Rinpon, bunshine made from explosive scale powder. Fu made the victory sign and her foe didn't move. Ah, he's broken. Winner by knockout Fu, Hayate said then Fu walks back up to the railing. The computer starts spinning with names again then spat out Shino Aburame and Zaku Ibumi. The next match will be between Shino Aburame and Zaku Ibumi. Will both contestants come down please? Shino and Zaku start walking down the stairs toward the arena. 
Both of them walk in front of Hayate and he says, We will now begin the third match. Well this will be interesting Zaku's at a disadvantage because Sasuke broke one of his arms. Naruto says, Now, Zaku, show us how you will fight. Dosa thinks watching his teammate, then he looks over at Orochimaru who makes a single hand sign and disappears into a poof of smoke. Shino and Zaku look at one another in an epic stare down. If you fight me here, you will never be able to fight again. Shino says to Zaku in a stoic tone. Give up, this one moves, somehow. Zaku says moving his left arm, then he charges Shino left hand forming a fist. One arm is good enough for you. Zaku throws a punch at Shino who blocks it effortlessly. You can't beat me with just one arm. Stop talking back. Zaku yells and he opens his bomb. Take this. Slicing sound wave. Shino gets blasted by the air wave and is knocked to the side. Come on, stand up. Shino gets back up and stares at Zaku. What, the? Just then the sound of scurrying insects is heard and to everyone shock bugs start coming out of the holes in Shino's skin. Bugs? They're coming out of his body, from underneath his skin, what a creepy guy. Zaku smirks at Shino. What kind of trick are you trying to pull? Just then more insects are heard behind Zaku who turns around in shock to see a gigantic swarm of them headed right towards him. These are called Kikaiku, they attack their prey in groups and consume its chakra. If I attack you with this many you will never be able to fight again. If you don't want that give up that is recommended. If you use that move with your left hand, I will make the bugs attack you from behind but if you attack the bugs with your left hand I will attack you. Either way you cannot get through this situation, you're supposed to keep your trump card until the end. Shortest. Battle. Ever. Naruto thinks in disappointment. I can't. Zaku thinks remembering his past. Screw up anymore. Zaku takes both his hands out of their slings. Don't underestimate me. Zaku grimaces in pain as he opens his right hand. You're supposed to save your trump card until the end. Right? What? He can use his right arm. Kiba says in shock. So half the battle was done to make it seem like he couldn't use his right arm. Very clever Zaku, very clever. Dosu thinks smirking. Zaku lets loose Aurora as he channels chakra into his arms and a second later chakra explodes from his elbows rendering his arms useless. My arms. Zaku cries out in pain. Zaku looks down at his arms and sees bugs coming out of holes in his arms. What the? Shino appears right behind Zaku. When I recommended that you give up, I told the bugs, to block those annoying air holes with their bodies, and stay still. Shino says and Zaku looks at him in shock. This is what a true trump card is. Zaku glares and swings his body to bring his arms around to hit Shino. Shut up! Zaku roars as he attacks but Shino backhands him away and Zaku hits the floor and collapses in pain. Hayate walks over to Zaku and notices the holes in his arms. It seems that his match is over. Hayate says. Winner, Shino Aburame. The medics came over and took Zaku off the field and then the computer started spinning and then landed on Sakura Haruno and Dino Yamanaka. Well, I never thought I'd end up fighting you Ino Pig. Sakura shouted. Well, I'm happy to be fighting you, Ino said. Sasuke-kun is mine, Sakura said smugly. At the name Sasuke Ino froze up and then her face started to show fear and she looked around for Sasuke but to her relief he wasn't there. You can have him, I'm not going to waste my valuable training time to try and hook up with a rapist. How dare you insult Sasuke-kun? How dare I? How dare I? Why shouldn't I insult the man who tried to rape me after he was finished with you? I can't believe it, Sakura said quietly. It's the truth. Sakura, I can't believe that you and Naruto Baka would make up such a filthy like about Sasuke-kun. Ino's face turned livid and she turned red with rage. You want to stand there and defend a rapist? I thought that you had more brains than that. Hajime, Hayate said and instantly a psychic wave slammed into everyone some were able to resist it no problem, others struggled a bit but were still able to resist, Sakura however couldn't move. WW what is this? Sakura asked struggling to speak. Like it cry baby Sakura? Ino asked. Using my brain power I can focus a wave of pure will, and while I'm not very good at it and as such most people can resist me but you, Akunoichi who never took her training seriously, has no chance. Ino forced her mind in deeper and started forcing Sakura to hallucinate. Sakura point of view. I was so confused I couldn't think straight and I couldn't stand. Ino started to disappear and reappear as I saw her move from one location to another only seeing a rainbow after image as Ino changed locations. You can't trust your sense anymore. Ino voice seemed to echo all around me. All your brain functions are in disarray. As she said it I noticed my arm trembling and my legs shaking as standing became almost impossible and the world tipped and flipped upside down and I threw up on the ground as a wave of nausea hit me. You can't even focus can you? Suddenly a new weight came crushing down upon me and I fell to my knees trembling. 
You know how my father is in the T&I department? Well thanks to him and bring your daughter to work day I learned lots of neat ways we hear in Konoha punish traders. Suddenly I was strapped to a table and it was made out of a wooden frame with two ropes fixed to the bottom and the other two tied into the handle on top. I struggled against my bonds but it was no use. Ino then shimmered into existence and three of her were present who had a hand on the levers attached to my arms and legs. Then both Enos on the levers started cranking them and my arms and legs were pulled apart and I was slowly pulled apart and I started screaming in pain and tried to break free but I was trapped the pain got more and more intense but then Eno stopped. But at this point I was in so much pain she only tilted her head to the side a wicked smile on her lips. PPPP please no more. I cried out in pain tears streaming down my face suddenly the world swirled again and I was strapped to a cross tinder all around me and most of the village surrounding me they were all holding torches and one by one they threw them on the tinder and I was slowly heating up and then I started burning and the pain was even worse and the people around me start chanting, burn the demon, burn the demon, burn the demon. As I looked down I was in an orange jumpsuit and I was screaming in a distinctly male voice as I was burned alive and to make things worse I saw my mother in the front of the crowd a sadistic look on her face as I screamed even louder. Does it hurt? Eno's voice rang out clearer than every voice chanting. S stop, please. I hope it does you bastard. This is payback. I started crying tears pouring from my eyes as I cried Eno only seemed to laugh even louder. Suddenly the world returned to normal and Eno was shaking with tears. I'm sorry Sakura. Eno walked forward but I backed up screaming and then suddenly the world went black. And Sakura's perspective. Eno, what you did here today might make Sakura develop a permanent phobia of you. Asuma said. B but I didn't mean it. Eno said crying. To her you did mean it. Naruto said. I know you were envisioning Sasuke as your victim but that made it all the worse. Winner by knockout. Hayate started but Eno stopped him. No, I, Eno Yamanaka. Forfeit my position on the finals. Then by relinquished position no one advances through the fourth round. Hayate said and then both combatants left the field and the name started spinning again and then it landed on Tamari and Ten Ten. A.N. The match goes to canon until the end the end when Tamari catches Ten Ten and, and sets her down gently. She's a good kunoichi I hope we could become good friends. Tamari thought. The board started spinning again and landed on Yoro and Hinata Huga. Hinata Huga versus Yoro, Hayate said Hajime. Yoro pulled out a shuriken and then weaved signs. Shuriken cage bunshine no jutsu. The one shuriken became 50 but Hinata dodged them all easily and so Yoro formed a water sword and charged Hinata but she pulled out Tobirama's Raijin no Ken and easily countered her foe's blade and knocked her foe out. Winner by knockout, Hinata Hyudga. Naruto shook his head. Baka you should know better than to engage with Hinata in Kenjutsu. Naruto thought and laughed. The board started spinning again and then turned out Naruto Otsutsuki and Dosuki Nuta. Naruto placed his fingers and placed sound suppression seals on his earlobes blocking out all sound. Naruto jumped down and faced his foe and smiled confidently. Shall we dance? Dosa charged and Naruto dodged his laughable punch and laughed as Naruto was unaffected by the sound wave. Surprise, I can't hear a thing because I applied sound suppression seals to my ears, so you attacks are useless against me. Naruto kicked Dosu and weaved hand signs and inhaled. Katan. Ryuka no Jutsu. Naruto exhaled a wave of fire which overwhelmed Dosu who was barely able to dodge and as such his melody gauntlet was warped and the holes sealed up from the molten metal. Naruto tossed a tri-pronged kunai which whizzed past Dosu's ear and Naruto caught the kunai and held it to his throat. Yield, I am possible. Dosu thought as he looked at his foe terror on his face. That was the Yondame Hokaye's Hiroshin no Jutsu. Several people had similar thoughts and Baki was sweating as he remembered the last time he had encountered the Hiroshin. Flashback 3rd Shinobi World War. Baki was a Chunin and the rest of Suno was launching an attack against Konoha and they had them pinned down. Sir. Baki reported to his commanding officer. The Konoha and are pinned down and we can move in for the final assault at your command. Excellent, send the message, we attack at once. His Jounin commander said, Hi. Baki ran off and got the rest of the Chunin and Jonin got ready to charge when they saw a man with bright yellow hair and a blue Jonin outfit and a flak jacket and piercing blue eyes stood in front of them. You attack my comrades, you are done here. Minato said an angry scowl on his face, several Jonin backed up in fear as they saw who their foe was. KK Kiroi Senko. Baki heard his commanding officer say in fear. Minato pulled out a tripronged kunai and suddenly the attack which Suna was so confident they would win turned into a slaughter as Minato warped around the battlefield killing anyone who he got close to. Baki was frozen in fear when Minato appeared in front of him and punched Baki and was one flying back. Never appear before me again or threaten my comrades, Minato said and Baki lost consciousness. End flashback. Impossible some no name Janan master the Hiroshin. 
Baki though then he saw Naruto's eyes and instantly knew who Naruto's father was, Proctor I forfeit. My power is no match for my foes, I can't win. Dosu said, winner by forfeit, Naruto Otsutsuki, Hayate said and then Naruto cancelled the silencing seals and walked back up to the balcony. The computer spun with names and generated, Kiba Inuzuka and Choji Akimichi. Then Choji and Kiba walked down into the arena, Choji, I know we're friends but I don't want you to hold back, okay, right Kiba, Choji said and then both made the seal of confrontation and they started exchanging blows and after a while they separated and Choji's left eye was tingling with static and was unable to move. Like that Choji? Kiba smirked. By channeling Raiden Chakra into my attacks I can paralyze my foe's limbs. Nice Kiba, Choji said then he made a hand sign. Baikano Jutsu. Expansion Jutsu, Choji expanded to twice his size. Nikuden Sencha. Human Boulder, Choji rolled at Kiba who dodged but Choji changed directions and continue his attack. Kiba kept dodging but Choji stopped his attacks and returned to normal size. Choji ran at Kiba and raised his hand and threw a punch at Kiba. Buban Baikano Jutsu. Partial Expansion Jutsu, his arm expanded and slammed into Kiba and he slammed into the wall, Kiba shook it off and pulled out a food pill and tossed it Akamaru and his turned fur turned red, Akamaru then jumped on Kiba's back and Kiba unleashed some chakra, Jujin Bunshine no Jutsu. Beast Human Clone, Akamaru transformed into Kiba and they both took on a feral look. Get ready Choji. Kiba and Choji got Reed to use their strongest attack, Nikudan Hari Sencha. Spiked Human Boulder. Choji expanded and draped kunai over himself, Raiden, Gatsuka. Lightning style, fang over fang, Kiba and Akamaru shot forward with lightning chakra coating their bodies and Choji rolled at Kiba and Akamaru then both attacks collided and there was an explosion and both combatants were thrown back, Choji slammed into the wall and passed out, Kiba slid a bit but jumped back up, winner by knockout, Kiba Inuzuka. Hayate said, well, that's a clean sweep for my squad, not bad eh, Kakashi? Kurunai said, well, nice job Kurunai, as for myself I knew that Naruto would win, Sasuke was sort iffy and I knew Sakura would lose, Kakashi said, then why under her? Guy asked, to teach her that the shinobi world is much harder than it seems, that's most unyouthful, you wanna know what's also most unyouthful? Naruto asked darkly, rape, I was meaning to ask about that, Kakashi said, why didn't you kill Sasuke, too quick, I want him to suffer, so I placed several seals on him including the Uzumaki's blood curse seal. Kakashi paled as he knew exactly what that particular seal did. When will you activate it? When I feel like it. Winner by knockout, Hayate said. Neji Hyuga. Oh, cool. Neji made it to the finals too, Naruto said in a much better mood. Next match, Shikamaru Nara vs Kin. An. Match goes to Kenan. Well he's lazy but clever, Hinata said and Naruto nodded in agreement then the board spun and then spat out Gara and Rock Lee. For the final match Sabaku no Gara vs Rock Lee. This will be most interesting, Lee said. Indeed, let's see what you can do. Gara smiled as he replied, a Taijutsu user vs a Jitten user with a spotless record in the manner of injuries. This ought to make for an interesting match. Naruto smirks. Alright when you're ready. Jaime. Hayate says Lee charges and takes a crack at him calling out, Konoha Senpu. Leaf Hurricane. Gara does nothing as the sand moves to block the first kick and repels him onto his butt. Lee sees the sand coming at him he rolls back springs up on his hands and back flips once and skids back to where he started on the floor. Gara does nothing as the sand returns to the gourd, even as fast as Lee is he can't get anywhere near him. Choji says in shock, so a sand manipulating jutsu huh, that won't be easy getting around, but nothing ventured nothing gained. Lee charges again takes another try with 4 kicks and 4 punches but Gara's sand blocks all of them. Then sand comes at him again this time he draws a kunai from his holster and parries the sand via cutting into it then he notices the sand regrouping he backs away jumps up launches a couple shuriken which is blocked. Gara still isn't moving as the sand gathers to form a circle around him. Blast it, he didn't even budge and how in Kami's name is he doing that he isn't even moving a muscle. Lee sees the sand coming towards him he jumps to dodge but he misjudges the sand and it catches his ankle. Gara does nothing as the sand slams Lee against a wall and as the sand charges him. Lee recovers and dodges the sand and tries again to nail Gara. I don't get it. Ino says. He is only using Taijutsu why doesn't he doesn't get some distance and use ninjutsu? Yes that would be a good idea that is if he had any. Guy says. Lee has no ninjutsu or ganjutsu skills at all. You're kidding. Oh that's nothing you should have seen him when we first met no talent whatsoever. Really? I can't believe it. Lee starts doing backflips to avoid the sand's assault but falls on his side because the sand shoots beneath his feet and Gara does nothing again as his sand moves in for the capture. 
Eno as well as several other Flinch as they think Gaara killed Lee. It's over. Shikamaru flinches but then everyone notices that Lee dodged that by one cannonball flip onto the big statue hand sign for the ram. Gaara and Lee glare at one another. A ninja who can neither do ninjutsu or ganjutsu is certainly a rarity. Guy says. Lee has only his daijutsu to rely on, some might consider that a disadvantage, but that's what makes him a winner. Alright Lee drop them. But, Sensei you stated that was only as a last resort if the lives of precious people are at stake. Lee responds. That's true I did and normally I'd stand fast to that, but this is an exception. Lee looks shocked. Really, really? Guy nods he moves his orange leg warmers up to reveal his leg weights. How are those? Ino asks. How old fashioned? Shikamaru says. Leg weights? Basic training equipment. Kakashi thinks looking at Guy in mild curiosity. This ought to be good. Naruto says. More like totally lame. Konkuro says. Lee takes his weights off. Ah that is better now I will be able to move freely. Lee says then he drops the weights. Come on you really think that you'll be able to get around Gar's sand defenses just by dropping a couple of pounds of weight? Tamari thinks smugly. That's when Lee's weights collide with the ground causing a huge explosion of debris. Oh. My. God. Ino thinks with the overlay anime reaction shot face. Naruto widens an eye at the display. So he wears weights too interesting. Naruto thinks impressed. Guy you're too much. Kakashi thinks grabbing his mask. Alright. Guy calls out to his student. Now go. Yes sir. Lee calls out. A and everything between point A, the dropping of the weights and the point B, after the second direct hit is cannon to the anime, just then everyone in the room notices Gara's face is falling off. He encased himself in sand, things must be bad. Well let's see what you do now Lee? Naruto asks. That's proof that Gar is feeling the pressure he would never have resorted to the armor otherwise. Tamari thinks then looks at Lee. This Lee is good no doubt about it. But that's not the same as winning it may not be as easy as we thought, but the outcome's a given, Gara can't lose. With Lee and Gara. Well is that all? Gara asks. Not good even with my high speed those sand themed defenses are nearly impossible to bypass, my best chance now is to get him airborne and away from the sand and pummel him from above with the lotus. Lee thinks and his eye twinkles, then he glances at Gaia who nods and Lee undoes his arm bandages to the point they were at his knees. Get ready. Lee employs his high speed and runs around Gara multiple times in a clockwise circle. That's right Lee good work that flimsy shield of sand won't protect him from your high speed lotus. Guy thinks. What are you waiting for? Gara asked interested to see what would happen next. Very well, you asked for it. Lee drops and lands a kick to Gara's chin he doesn't go high due to the weight of the gourd. Try this. Lee proceeds to get him higher via more kicks. What an incredible series of kicks. Kakashi thinks, even an ordinary lotus puts an enormous strain on the body, let alone this, you've got to finish it now Lee. Guy clamps his hands to pray. Just then Gara noticed Lee wincing in pain and Gara's skin cracked a bit more, Kakashi and Naruto's eyes widen slightly. Lee's bandages wrap around Gara. now take this. Lee calls out they spin round and round until they are blurs. A motrenge. Then comes the impact, the ground beneath Gara is fractured, cracked and destroyed. Lee lands on the ground kneeling and breathing hard. It is over I got him, right on Lee? Guy calls out, amazing he won. Kiba says, not quite yet. Naruto said, you did it. Ino shouts. Way to go Lee. Is he? That guy isn't dead is he? Shikamaru asks, Hayate walks over to Gara to see if he was still alive. Just then the Gara's skin starts collapsing into his head and Gara starts to dissolve into sand, Lee looks in shock as Gara decomposes. What? Lee asks, what the? Sakura calls out then Gara turns to sand. An empty shell. Ino calls, but how when did he do it? Guy asks, it was when you closed your eyes to pray. Kakashi responds. At that moment Lee closed his eyes too, because of the pain, that's when he did it. Lee notices Gara collapsing in on himself partial bugs eyed backslash. What, not bad that almost hurt, Gara said. Now it's my turn. Lee, having recovered enough to able to move without the pain from ripping through him is running around dodging Gar's sand attacks, as Tamari looks on in confusion at Lee's actions. Why hasn't that nuts given up yet? She asks in a low volume. Gar nails Lee with a sand attack that knocks him on Lee's stomach. Lee quickly gets up with his hand shaped as bear claws forearms crossed blocking his face minus his eyes still partially reeling from the emote Renge after shock still apparent by his light paste painting. Well this is boring. Gara says, poor kid Gara will just continue to toy with him till he begs for mercy. Konkuro says, well my friend from the sand, your buddy is gonna be in for a long match, that's mainly because Lee literally doesn't know how to give up. 
Guy responds Lee pants forearms crossed blocking position notices Guy smiling at him. Guy sensei, thank you. Lee thinks and smiles and gets into his signature stance. Gara in suspicion launches an attack Lee dodges it at the high speeds he was using before, Naruto smiles. I'll make you proud sensei, by simply doing the following follow my path to end, forge ahead and be the ninja I know I can be. Lee thinks in determination. Lee's smiling he's running for his life but he is still smiling. Ino says confused. Yes but now it's Gara's turn to run. Guy responds. What? Ino looks at Guy. Konoha's lotus blooms twice. Guy smiles. No, Guy you didn't. Kakashi says in fear. Yes Kakashi I did. Guy responds. So that Genin, that boy, is able to open the eight inner gates and use the Urarenge, Urarenge? Neji thinks in horror as he had read all about that jutsu and knew of the consequences of using it. That's correct. Well if that isn't the most. Alright so how many gates is he able to open now? Five gates. Okay what are these eight inner gates you're talking about in the Urarenge? Ino asked. The eight gates are like valves or chakra limiters that must be opened if one is to release the Urarenge. I'm still not following. Kakashi lifts his headband revealing his Sharingan. There are gates along the chakra network located at those points where the chakra is most heavily concentrated starting at the head they are Kaimon Gate of Opening, Kuban, the Gate of Rest, Simon, Gate of Life, Shoman, Gate of Pain, Taman, Gate of Limit, Kimon Gate of View, Kiyomon, Gate of Wonder, and Shimon, Gate of Death. These are what are known as the eight inner gates. Their purpose is to limit the flow of chakra throughout the body, but the emote Renge puts tremendous strain on these limiters eventually forcing the gates open. This releases the restraints on the chakra, the result being that a person's strength can be increased tenfold or more. Kakashi explains, the emote Renge opens only the first gate the gate of opening releasing their brain's restraints on the muscles allowing a person to bring forth its body strength to its fullest. You've seen the results. And the Ura Renge? Ino asks. At the second gate, Cuban, one's strength is increased further and at the third gate, the Simon, one enters the Ura Renge. Wait a minute just the emote Renge nearly destroyed Lee he could barely move what's going to happen to him if he takes it farther. Exactly. Kakashi responds. By opening all eight gates you could obtain power beyond even the Hokage's the only drawback is. Kakashi pauses for dramatic effect. You die. Ino's eyes widen in fear. I don't know what this boy means to you. But I shouldn't have to tell you that we never bring our personal feelings into this. I wouldn't have thought you were capable of this. You have no right, you know nothing about him, nothing at all. That boy has something important and he's determined to prove it even at the cost of his life, and I am determined to help him not for his sake but because that is a goal worth reaching. Flashback. Memory of Guy and Lee before Guy teaches him the Urarenge and the memory ends at. You can only use this technique under one very strict condition and that condition is. End of flashback. And that condition is. Lee thinks as his fingers curled and arms crossed. Gara notices a change in Lee. Just what are you plotting? Gara asked. Because it won't work this match is over. I couldn't agree more, because this is match is over one way or another. Lee responds. Neji, Sasuke, and Naruto. Gara notices the change increasing but is clueless as per how to handle it I refuse to be the one to lose here, I ask you guys sensei please let this work it is now or never. He starts radiating chakra and the rushing blood starts turning his visible skin red. Lee slash with Guy in his thought voice to protect and maintain one's own ninja way. Then Lee roars out. The third gate, gate of life open. As the onlookers from above observe the match look on at the Genin whose chakra is now surging through him some confused as per what's happening. Gara look him. The third gate is opened now begins the Renge Kakashi said. Yeah you'd like that wouldn't you? Guy said slightly irritated at the cycloptic ninja Kakashi only looking at him in response. The fourth gate, Shoman openly said. Okay to open gates through sheer effort is no small feat, it's pretty safe to have him classified as a genius, Kakashi said partially impressed. After a while of adapting to the new surge of power Lee nearly crouched before moving. No sooner than when he moved the ground exploded from the force of Lee's movements and not three quarters of a second later Lee's foot meets Gara's chin but unlike last time Lee's kick created an explosion of dust, stone and partial bits of sand. All the onlookers had to start shielding their eyes. Well this speed can be on par with Minato Sensei, only difference a lot quieter. Kakashi said as he picked a little speck out of his ear. Lee notices the sand armor cracking. Kiss that sand armor goodbye as I tear it off you. Lee says all the while moving at high speeds. For the duration of the match Lee was batting Gara around like a rag doll all the while not letting him touch the ground. As tough as my armor is it's can't hold up against this pounding. Gara thought as he watched his armor crumble. One more and we're done here Lee said then he calls out. The fifth gate, Taman. Open. He lets gravity bring him down to Gara. 
Lee passes a quick one sixteenth of a second glance at Neji then thinks. Well Neji, count yourself lucky because you have a preview of what I have in store for you. And he proceeds to shoot towards Gara but surprises Gara again when he pulls a speed themed vanishing trick nailing Gar in the gut and just when the surprise is gone Lee had attached his bandage wrapping to Gara's belt and he pulls him as the sand drops to try and surround him. That's the beauty of the Ura Renge since the user is employing Taijutsu at speed so blinding any defenses is rendered as useless as a dust bunny that nothing I've seen can block or defend against it not even Neji or Gar's sand shield. Guy thinks watching his student attack. Now to end it, Lee said as he pulls Gara towards him while throwing a punch and kick at Gara and then he roars out. Ura Renge. Lee grunts in pain as the negative effects of the Ura Renge is felt in Lee's right arm and leg. Gara unleashes all his sand to cushion his landing and his was injured but still alive. That was a good match but now I win, Gara said and shot his sand out and wrapped around Lee. Give up. Gara used the sand to knock out Lee. Winner by knockout, Gara. Hayate said, he's a good fighter I haven't had a fight like that since Naruto, Gara said releasing Lee from the sand and the medics took Lee off the field. Will the finalists please report to the arena? And they all filed down and Hayate held out a box with a lid and a hole cut in it. Alright please reach in and take out a slip of paper and read the number on it. Naruto reached in and pulled out a paper with the number one on it. I got number one, fitting, Naruto said. I got nine, Sasuke said. I got six, Tamari said. I got seven. Konkuro said, I got 10, Hinata said, I got 11, Kiba said, I did 2, Neji said, I got 5, Shikamaru said, I got 4, Gar said, I got 8, Shino said, I got 3, Fu said, the finals will be as follows, Hayate said, Naruto Otsutsuki vs Neji Hyuga for the first round, Fu vs Gara for the second round, Shikamaru Nara vs Tamari for the third round, Shino Aburami vs Konkuro for the 4th round and Hinata Hyuga vs Sasuke Uchiha for the 5th round, Kiba Inuzuka will fight the winner of the 3rd round. Alright gather at the stadium in the center of the village in 1 month's time for the finals. Why a month? Kiba asked. Important clientele will be making their way to Konoha to watch the finals and it will be time for you to gain new skills in order to impress new clients or keep hold ones. Sarutobi explained. Chapter 12 Chunin exams finals. Time skip one month later. Naruto and the Chunin hopefuls were standing in the arena as a huge crowd gathered. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the biannual Chunin exams. Genma Shiranui said and the crowd erupted into cheers. Before you stand 11 Chunin hopefuls who will be fighting both for your amusement and for the chance to become Chunin. The crowd cheered and applauded. Now these Genin will be fighting one-on-one -on -one tournament style. Keep in mind that if you don't win the tournament doesn't mean that you won't make Chunin and just because you win the tournament doesn't mean you will make Chunin. Up in the Chunin box Sarutobi was sitting watching when a voice said, Greetings, Hokage-sama. Sarutobi turned to see the Kazekage and two guards walking in. Greetings, Kazekage-sama, Sarutobi said and he got up and bowed, Sarutobi and the Kazekage sat down. I hope your trip was pleasant. It was. Shouldn't you have picked the god I'm Hokage by now? There is still some life in these old bones, Sarutobi chuckled. Don't think I'm not onto you, Orochimaru. Sarutobi thought. Besides I have a successor in mind, he just needs a few more years under his belt. Oh, who? He's in the exams he's only a Janan in name, you'll see who will be my replacement. The first match of the Chunin exams in between Naruto Otsutsuki and Neji Hyuga. Will all others competitors please leave the arena and report to the competitors box box and wait for your name to be called, Genma said and everyone but Naruto and Neji left the arena. Watch closely Hanabi, Hiyashi said. I'm about to make a huge amount of Ryo. White Hosan. Hanabi asked. There are 50 to 1 odds that Naruto will lose this match. You bet against Neji Ni? Your cousin is a skilled fighter but, not even the late shot I'm Hokage could beat Naruto. Naruto Ni is that powerful? Absolutely. Hajimi. Genma jumped back as Neji charged and threw a punch which Naruto caught and the ground shattered and a crater was where the two warriors stood. Naruto threw his own punch which Neji dodged. Naruto threw a kick at Neji who ducked and threw another punch which Naruto spun and dodged. Naruto wrapped his arm around Neji's neck then spun him around and kicked Neji who flew back and slammed into the wall. Naruto straightened out and smirked revealing his Sharingan. Neji removed himself from the wall and activated his Byakugan. So Indra's gift versus Hiyayo's gift, eh? Naruto said as he smirked confidently. Yeah, Neji replied let's see whose dojutsu is stronger, my Byakugan or your Sharingan. The crowd was instantly in an outrage. That brat stole the eyes of the Uchiha. A member of the crowd shouted. He's in league with Itachi. Another cried in rage. The demon had the Uchiha killed in order to steal the Sharingan. Not at all, Sarutobi said gaining the attention of the crowd. 
Through DNA testing it is revealed that Naruto's father's side of the family is a banished branch member of the Uchiha clan's descendants. This man's was removed from the Uchiha clan records because in the days of the era of warring states this man was caught aiding the Senju clan. So while I'm not a member of the Uchiha clan I still have the Dojutsu, Naruto said. I unlocked the Sharingan at age 5 but I kept it a secret, at age 7 I had it fully mature, at age 10 I unlocked a very special stage, the Aya no Manga Kyo. Uchiha clan legends state that once every once in several generations and Uchiha will unlock the Mangekyo and it will be eternal in its light and will take on the appearance of the last wielder of the eternal Mangekyo's Sharingan. At the age of 13, three months before I graduated the academy, I unlocked the Rinnegan, the legendary eyes of the Rikudo Sanin. Well, after that dramatic reveal, shall we continue our match, Naruto? Neji asked. Yeah, sounds good. Naruto and Neji started trading punch and after several minutes they separated Naruto looked at Neji who had a disappointed look on his face. What's wrong you seem disappointed? Honestly, yeah I am. Why don't you like the power you have? I do, but that's not the issue. I thought I'd be doing better than this. I don't think I follow. I've spent all this time pushing myself to be the strongest and then I learned there's a power level I'll never get to, and I hate that. Oh now I get it. Yeah I'd hate the fact there is someone stronger than me who could threaten my loved ones and I can't ever beat them. Too. That being said I still want to see how I measure up to someone as strong as you. Then let's keep going. Naruto and Neji started tagging each other with blows that would shatter boulders. Looks like they're wrapping it up, Hinata said smiling. They were just playing before? Tamari asked confused. Yeah, Nejini is pretty strong. Granted he's not as physically strong but he's no pushover. Naruto and Neji dashed apart and cracking their joints. You should know I'm not satisfied either at least not yet, Naruto said. Why is that? Neji asked. I still haven't even come close to using my full power in this fight. Oh that makes sense, I've been going at about 80% myself. W what you're holding back? Naruto looked shocked then he got angry. Alright, fine, let's see you do at this speed. Naruto charged in kicking up dust and started punching at Neji who blocked and dodged. Both were moving at speeds that anyone below down and couldn't see them. I'm confused, why isn't Neji using Jukan moves? Lee asked. It's very simple my youthful Lee. Guy said. Naruto knows how to counter Jukan in all its forms, as such Neji needed a new form of fighting so he approached me to learn Gokan and incorporated it into his fighting style and to counter Naruto's power. Whoa these guys are good. One of the Jounin evaluators said. Yeah, such speed and power, fear at least Jounin rank, a second said. Naruto formed a Rasengan in his hand and charged forward to attack Neji who started spinning. Rasengan, Naruto roared. Hakshu, Kaiden. 8 trigrams palm rotation. Neji called out, the two spiraling attacks collided and at first neither attack dominated the other, then sparks started to gather in Naruto's Rasengan and the blue of the Rasengan turned brighter and the sound of thunder filled the stadium. He's using Rasenkami Nari Yari? Kiba asked shakingly. No he's just using, Raten, Rasengan, Hinata said. It's to increase his piercing power. Shortly thereafter the Kaiden shattered and Naruto thrust his Raten Rasengan into Neji's stomach. Raten, Rasengan. Naruto called out and Neji was blasted back sparks dancing over his body. Neji slammed into the wall and slumped down and laughed and coughed a little. Damn, Neji laughed. Guess I lost. Then he slumped unconscious. Winner by knockout, Naruto Otsutsuki, Genma said and most of the crowd cheered while the devote Naruto haters were silent. Naruto picked up Neji and carried him to the rest wing for him to recover. For the second match, Fu and Sabaku no Gara please report to the arena. Gara and Fu walked down to the arena. This should be fun, what do you say, wanna keep them out of it? Fu asked. I won't transform completely if you don't. Gara said. Far enough. Gara and Fu stood still eyes locked. Hajime. Genma called, San shot at Fu who dodged and fired of a fireball at Gara who sand rose up to block the attack and the heat of the fire turned the sand to glass. Oh, not bad, using fire jutsu to turn my sand into glass. Yeah, no sand no jutsu. Don't think it's that simple. Gar more sand shot up from the ground. Wherever there is dirt I can make more sand. Alright then how's this? Fu exhale a huge amount of silver powder and then clapped her hands. Ninpo, Rinpungakur no Jutsu. A huge flash of blinding light filled the arena Fu formed a hardened shell over her hand and charged into punch Gar but the sand rose up and blocked the attack. What the? The sand automatically raised to defend me, blind me is useless. Alright then try this. Fu jumped back and started unleashing powder and then started running and flying using wings from Chomei causing a tornado of powder to surrounding Gara. If you're going to do something I suggest you do it or you won't win. Alright you asked for it. Fu continued to let howl as she jumped and weaved hand sings. 
Kaden, Gokaku no Jutsu. Fun unleashed a huge fireball and smiled. You're going out with a bang, that's how Fu gets done, Fu snapped. Repun Bakasai. Scale blast, the tornado exploded in a huge blast and the wall shook. I'm so glad that I asked Kushina to draw structure protection seals last week. Sarutobi thought. Speaking of Kushina, where the heck is she? You'd think she'd be here to support her son, Kushina. Kushina was in the stands and she was in Anbu costume her blade on her back. In order to keep her cover she couldn't cheer but she had placed huge bets on Naruto and Hinata and was already making a killing. So so Ichi won his match which means that I've won 300,000 Ryo and when Hinata wins her match I'll add another 700,000 to my pool and if Naruto-kun wins the whole thing I'll add additional 700 million and if Hinata wins I get 600 million. So either way I'll be able to buy as much ramen as I want for at least 3 months. Kushine thought and giggled at the thought of how much she was going to win. Winner by knockout Gara. Genma called and the crowd cheered respectfully. So Gara can use the Sandaime Kaze Kage Satetsu as well, cool. Kushina muttered. For the next match Shikamaru Nara vs Tamari, Shikamaru was pushed out of the competitor's box and Kushina started laughing as she saw the culprit was her son. Hajime. Shikamaru threw his shadow out while in the shadow of the arena and Tamari jumped back and eventually the shadow stopped just before it reached Tamari, with her fan she drew a line in the dirt. So your shadow can utilize any show you're in. The wall's shadow for instance and while that gives you an extended range but no matter how much you stretch it your shadow can only go so far, your range is 15 meters and 32 centimeters. So just as Gara said she's strategy type 2, Shikamaru's in trouble, Asuma said. Tamari's got this in the bag long range combat is her specialty. Konkuro said. I'd be inclined to agree with you if I didn't know Shikamaru a little better than you. You know something I don't. Of course I know you something you don't. Like what? Just watch the match. Shikamaru had thrown smoke bombs and dived into the trees and Tamari threw wind jutsu after wind jutsu in order to discern Shikamaru's location. Man I'd really wish I knew some katan in jutsu. Shikamaru thought. Well no use complaining now, so time to think. Shikamaru formed his thinking hand sign and then after a while he looked at the sky and reached into his kunai pouch and began to get to work. Come out coward. Tamari shot then swung her fan again. Kamai Tachi no jutsu. The wind blasted and sliced move trees two kunai flew at her and she blocked them and then Shikamaru's shadow came out from the trees and Tamari smirked and didn't move. Don't bother as long as I'm behind this line he can't touch me. The shadow didn't stop what the, it's still coming. Tamari jumped back and the shadow stopped just short of her her and she smiled and she drew a new line. Shoot so close. Ino complained, just then an object covered the sun slightly. Tamari, Konkuro shouted. Above you. And a shoat appeared on the ground and Tamari jumped back again and again to avoid the shadow and eventually the parachute landed and stopped the shadow again just short of Tamari for a third time. Tamari slammed her fan in the ground and crouched behind it. All right, I'll distract him with a bunch shine and then attack. Tamari though and then Shikamaru's shadow retracted. Tamari started weaving signs bunch shine no. Tamari froze paralyzed. What? It took a while, but cage main jot not success. Shikamaru said, but how? I was sure to stay out of range. Look behind you, I'll let you. Shikamaru turned his head and so did Tamari and she saw a small hole behind her with Shikamaru's shadow extending out of it. Recognize it? The hole behind you is where Gaar sent sand into the ground to make more and the hole in front of me is where it came out. The two are connected. I never imagined the shadows underground. And that was your mistake. Shikamaru and started walking toward each other. Tamari was unable to stop herself. As they got closer Shikamaru raised his hand and so did Tamari. All right that's it, I give up. The whole crowd was in stunned silence. He what? Someone shouted and everyone was shouting in equal confusion. Yeah, I'm good for another 30 seconds then I'm done. What a troublesome situation and here I'd already planned out the next 200 moves in my head but I'm out of chakra. This slacker clown outsmarted me and then he just gives up but I guess that is what you'd expect from someone from Konoha's Nara clan. Tamari thought shocked and then chuckled slightly. Winner by forfeit, Tamari, Genma said. You outsmarted me Nara. Not bad. Tamari smiled. You're not that bad of a strategist yourself, perhaps you and I could play a game of shogi sometime? Shikamaru asked. It's a date. Tamari smiled again and both combatants walked of the field. Well Shino Aburame and Konkuro please report to the arena. Genma called and then Shino and Konkuro walked down and face each other. A puppet master versus a master of the Kikaiku this won't last long. Naruto said, why? Gara asked, no matter who well he can control the puppet Shino's insects will find Konkuro no matter where he goes. Hajime. A.N. Match goes just as the match between Shino and Konkuro during the invasion goes.
Double knockout no one advances through this round. The crowd cheered and then Genma called out. Now for the next match, Hinata Hyuga vs Sasuke Uchiha. The Crow was highly anticipating this match, two heirs of very prestigious clans were fighting, most though Sasuke would win but those who knew Hinata and her power knew she would win. Hinata sunshined down to the arena and then Sasuke appeared from the doorway. This is a blood feud match, which means the match doesn't end until the initiator decides to let the foe live, and that person is Hinata Hyuga, or one person lies dead. The crowd was stunned into silence and was ready to protest but Sarutobi stood up. This is an ancient law sent up since the days of my late predecessor, the shot I'm Hokage and while it hasn't been in practice for a long time it is still just as valid, Hinata Hyuga has reached this decision and it was approved by the entire Shinobi Council for an inexcusable crime committed by Sasuke Uchiha. In my eyes this is a far more merciful punishment than what one Naruto Otsutsuki who would have had Sasuke Uchiha sent into Hozuki Castle and then would activated the deadly Uzumaki clan's blood curse seal and have Sasuke live out the rest of his days in pain unable to escape it no matter how hard he tried. I still would have done that. Kushina muttered under her breath as she, along with many Kunoichi hated rapists but she had to steady her hand. Hajime. Genma called out. Hinata charged in without a word and unleashed a barrage of strikes snapping bones and tendons with every strike, Sasuke cried out in pain tried to avoid the strikes. Kakashi sensei why is Hinata doing that? Sakura asked. Can't she see she is torturing Sasuke kun? Hinata doesn't care, Kakashi said monotonously. She has had over a month to perfect and hone skills that she would use to kill Sasuke but she learned how to cause so much pain without killing and that is what she will do. Kakashi watched the match without any form of pity. Why? Hinata has a very good reason to hate rapists. Her mother was almost raped during the Third Shinobi World War and she was raised in a house where rapists were punished by a beating from the clan head and while she has never witnessed it herself she was taught by her father who was completely heartless when it came to teaching this to her and only chose to teach her the most painful ways to attack. Sakura tried to get up to stop the match but Kakashi placed a hand on her shoulder stopping her. Why aren't you going to stop her? Because I have no right and to top it off I don't want to. Many people think that Sasuke's actions are forgivable because he is the last Uchiha but because he not as well within her rights to attack Sasuke with all her might in this match she can turn this into an execution match if she so desired and that what she did, I have to do something. If you do anything you will be executed for high treason. High treason? Yes, now watch. Hinata had punched Sasuke so hard he slammed into the wall and was coughing up blood. Had enough shit stain. I was hoping to save this for Naruto but I guess I'll use it on you. Sasuke closed his eyes and then opened his eyes to reveal the Mongekyo. Who did you kill? Hinata growled. Doesn't matter now die. Sasuke laughed and his eyes started to bleed and Hinata activated her Tensegan and coated her body in the Ghetto Dama but the black flame still burst to life and rocketed towards Hinata and blasted her but they were quickly extinguished and Hinata unwrapped herself and she was livid. You not only raped a Kunoichi but you also killed your best friend I'm really getting sick of this. Hinata blurred into existence right in front Sasuke. Juukenho. Haki San Byakuro Kuju Ishiki. Gentle Fist 8 Trigrams 361 Palms, Hinata slammed her finger into Sasuke. Nishu. Yanshu. Hakicho. Jirokusho. Sanji Nishu. Rakuhu Uyanshao. Hayaku Nayuhachi Sho San Byakuro Kuju Ishiki. Hinata shut down Sasuke's entire chakra network and punched him into the wall. Sasuke screamed in pain as his already broken bones were shattered. You're so weak Sasuke. Hinata growled laughing. I will let you live, but, I will take your eyes out of your skull, and destroy them. Hinata ripped Sasuke's eyes out of his skull just as she promised and placed them in a preservative jar but placed a genjutsu on the stadium to make it look she crushed them. Hinata spat on Sasuke and then kicked him in the nuts for good measure. We coward, you're a disgrace. Hinata turned on her heel and walked out of the stadium when the sound of chirping birds was heard and Sasuke was holding a purple ball of lightning and Sasuke charged her and Hinata reacted on pure instinct and sliced off Sasuke arm with the Raijin no Ken and kicked it away then slammed a Juken strike into Sasuke's heart and he coughed up blood and he fell backward and hit the ground, dead. The whole crowd was stunned silent as they witnessed the extinction of the Uchiha clan. No, Orochimaru shouted as he threw his smoke bomb to signal the invasion. The arena was instantly in chaos as the destruction of Konoha began. Chapter 13, Frustration of a Fallen Hokage Naruto and Hinata looked at each other and sprang into action and Gara started transforming into Shukaku and Naruto nodded at Hinata who slammed her palm on the ground. Kushio no Jutsu. In a flash Kurama appeared in his human form and nodded at his host and then Kurama grabbed Gara and then they both vanished from a hand sign from Naruto they were transported far away from the village. Hinata we need to go back up Gigi. 
Naruto said and then they jumped toward the cage box only for a purple wall to raise into existence. Naruto and Hinata landed next to a squad of Anbu who looked at them. What's the situation? The barrier burns any who touch it and the four sound shinobi maintain it, and as such we can't get through to Hokage-sama and back him up. The Anbu captain said, leave it to us. Naruto-san then he looked at the Anbu. You should go and help the villagers evacuate or defend the village, standing here won't help much. The Anbu nodded and Naruto helped Hinata slip through the barrier and instantly they were by the Hokage's side. Naruto, Hinata, let's end him, Sarutobi said and the two charged in while Sarutobi stood still gathering energy. Naruto swiped at Orochimaru with his sword and kicked out with his leg, when Orochimaru dodged the blade attack, which Orochimaru blocked only and then was struck from behind by Hinata's Juken strikes from behind and Orochimaru jumped back and waved hand signs. Kushios, Edo Densei. A coffin rose up with a symbol for first, first. Then a second coffin rose, second. Then a third with coffin with the kanji for four started to raise. Oh no you don't. Naruto weaved counter signs but Orochimaru's cage bunshine stabbed him in the back with a kusanagi blade and Naruto snapped the fake blade and destroyed the cage bunshine and the wound healed but it gave Orochimaru to raise the final coffin. And third, Orochimaru said smiling darkly, bastard. Hinata growled and the coffins opened revealing the shot dime. Nidime, and Yondame Hokage. It's been a long time Saru, Hashirama said. Oh it's you, Tobirama said. You've gotten so old Saru Tobi. I can't believe I have to fight my brethren in such a manner, what a vile trick. Saru Tobi growled. Akushios it seems he used the forbidden Edo Tensei, how insolent. Tobirama says as the three coffins fall from behind him. Then tell me Saru Tobi. Hashirama says. Does this summoning jutsu mean that we are being forced? to battle against you? Enough with the reminiscing. Orochimaru sneers. It's time that we get started. Wherever you live, there is always war. Isn't it great? Orochimaru asks. How horrible, Minato said. To give my life to protect Konoha and then have it restored only to force to fight my comrades. Nothing good can ever come of this you've disrespected the dead and manipulated time. Sarutobi says. Orochimaru lifts up three kunai using his tongue to hold one. Then he inserts one of them into Hashirama and the other into Tobirama and steam rose off the coffins restoring Hashirama and Tobirama but when Orochimaru went to put the third one in the kanji for death appeared on Minato's head and burned the kunai and tagged to ashes. Sorry Orochimaru, but Sinigami-sama won't allow you to control me, my life belongs to him and as such I can't serve anyone else. Minato jumped and landed next to his son, so looks like father and son fight together, eh dad? So it would seem, let's see how much you have improved. Minato took a battle stance and drew a kunai. Hinata walked next to Naruto and smirked while Naruto looked at the two facing him. Which one do you want Haim? I'll take Nidaim Sama, I want to test my suit and affinity against his. Dad, you and Gigi work together and take down Orochimaru and I'll fight Shadaim Sama. Right. Minato and his sage mode Sarutobi stood together, then all four charged. Naruto vs Hashirama. Naruto activated his Sharingan and charged in as Hashirama followed suit and they traded blows as Hashirama used his nature fist fighting style to counter Naruto's dragon fist, both shinobi clashed with unending ferocity and eventually both landed a blow on the other. Naruto and Hashirama were sent flying back and they both and flipped back to their feet. Naruto weaved hand signs and ended on Ox, Reikiri. Naruto charged in at blinding speeds and ran Hashirama though in the heart. The previous shinobi no Kami drew his fist back and punched. But Naruto was faster and the attack passed right through him and countered with a kick that blasted Hashirama back. As soon as Naruto removed his hand from Hashirama's chest the wound started healing and in seconds Hashirama was after Naruto again. Baka. Naruto thought as he dodged Hashirama's attacks. Edo Dense bodies will regenerate any damage as long as they are bound to this earth. Naruto countered with his own attacks and kicked again and launched Hashirama back. Katan, Gokamekiyaku. Naruto unleashed a wave of fire at Hashirama. Makuten, Hobi no Jutsu. A dome-like defensive structure that completely surrounds Hashirama which takes the form of a dragon's face and defends him from the wave of fire. Alright think Naruto, every Jutsu has a weakness even Edo Tensei. You've studied this Jutsu over and over and you know every in and out of this Jutsu. Edo Tensei, a Jutsu that summons the dead back to the world at the cost of a living body to house the dead soul and any damage that is done is regenerated as long as the jutsu remain cast. You want to use my chakra that might give you an edge and could even give you a way out of this jutsu, Lobo said gaining his Jin Shuriki's attention. Of course. Get Odama. They would be able to destroy Edo Tensei bodies easily. Naruto entered his Rikudo mode and the Get Odama floated behind him. But that being said I must be careful in this mode I can't use Kamue. 
Naruto form a hand sign. Senpo, Inten Rea. Naruto held his hands out and the purple lightning fired out at Hashirama who made a hand sign and a wooden wall to protect himself. The lightning destroyed the wall easily and Hashirama jumped up to punch Naruto. Rimbo. Hashirama was blocked by the shadow then Naruto swiped the staff made from the Ghetto Dama and cut off Hashirama's arm then slammed a Rasengan into Hashirama blasting him back and then he crashed into the ground. Naruto looked at Hashirama and just as he suspected the arm didn't regenerate but the damage from the Rasengan did. Naruto created four more shadows and they restrained Hashirama then Naruto poked Hashirama's head and destroyed the tag in Hashirama's head. Well done young Uchiha, Hashirama said smiling. I can't move and you have found a way to neutralize Ado Tensei. Yeah I did. So this jutsu that restrains me, what is it? Four shadows that exist in the invisible world of Limbo which coincides with our own. Oh and I presume that they can interact with this world and one of them blocked my attack. Yes, now before we continue I must take more steps to keep you restrained. Naruto produced several black rods and stuck them into Hashirama's back and the shadow retracted back to Naruto. Thank you Shadaim Sama. Now I have to ask you a very important question. What is the will of fire? To put it simple the will of fire is the entire village is like a large family unit and every Konoha shinobi with the will of fire loves, believes, cherishes, and fights to protect the village, as previous generations had done before them. Thank you Shadaim Sama it's just like what I heard from Asura Otsutsuki when I trained with him briefly I hope that one day I will be able to speak an Indra transmigrant and speak with this person one day. Asura? Who is that? You and Madara were predestined to clash time and time again as he was Indra's transmigrant and those two brothers clashed over and over and you two were caught in the middle of it. That explains why I felt such a kinship with Madara. We were resurrections of brothers. Yes you were and that is why Madara hated you with a passion at times Indra was the older and yet he was cast aside. Well if I see Madara maybe I can talk to him about this. Then I wish you luck with that shot I'm Sama. Well now that I get a good look at you, young Uchiha. You radiate my chakra and Madara's chakra as well as a similar chakra to Mito's. I'm not just a Nuchiha I'm also a Senju and a Nuzumaki. What? Hashirama said confused. I am the same body of the Rikudo Senin and as such I am a Nuchiha, Senju, and Uzumaki. My goal is to bring peace to this word and protect my loved ones. Well you have humored me long enough young one and I want to tell you that I think you'd be a fine Hokage. Thank you Hashirama-sama. Please tell me your name so I may give you a proper send off before you send me back to the afterlife. Naruto, Naruto Otsutsuki. Then Naruto Otsutsuki, I, Hashirama sent you, wish you the best and I hope to see you in the afterlife, but please, not for a long time. Hashirama smiled and Naruto placed an open palm on Hashirama's head and a small hole opened in Naruto's palm and the Ghetto Dama obliterated Hashirama's Edo Tensei body. Naruto felt a cold sensation dingle down his spine and felt an aura of death permeate the air. Naruto knew this sensation, it only happened when this Hinigami entered the mortal world, and Naruto only knew one jutsu that could make that happen. Jigi. Naruto dashed over to his grandfather figure. Hinata versus Tobirama five minutes earlier. Hinata and Tobirama faced off and unleashed their chakra as it clashed against each other. Then both shinobi charged each other and both clashed with fists and chakra. Hinata pressed her advantage as Tobirama attacked her in close combat and started to shut down his chakra network and started shutting them down. Tobirama was able to utilize the recovery powers of Edo Tensei to heal from the Jukan strikes and continue to attack with vigor. Hinata landed a strong punch on Tobirama and sent him flying back. Tobirama jumped back to his feet and started weaving hand signs. Sutan, Suryakobaku. Water style, explosive bite of the water dragon. A bunch of water bullets flew at Hinata who ducked and weaved to avoid them and weaved her own signs. Sutan, Bakasui Shoha. Hinata unleashed unleashed a huge wave of water which Tobirama easily avoided but Hinata smirked and her body melted into water and Tobirama looked around trying to sense her only to blasted from behind by Raiden, Rasengan, Tobirama was paralyzed by the water and electricity in the air and attack respectively and was blasted back and Hinata clapped her hands together and started entered sage mode Hinata thrust her hands out Senpo, Mizumegami no Ken, Sage Art, Fists of the Water Goddess. At Hinata's command fists of water molecules gathered together and formed fists and unleashed a barrage of attacks which Tobirama couldn't dodge. After the seemingly endless barrage Tobirama started reforming and Hinata cracked her neck. Out of the corner of her eye she saw Naruto slice Hashirama's arm off with the Ghetto Dama and then she saw Sarutobi and Minato easily overpowering Orochimaru, then she focuses on Tobirama who had fully reformed. Tobirama drew some kunai and threw them at Hinata who started spinning. Hakshu, Kaiden, the kunai and Tobirama, 
were blasted into different directions and Hinata took advantage of Dobarama's distraction and fired a bone at Dobarama and it pierced his stomach and he started to slowly turn to dust and he smiled at Hinata. You fight well young Hyuga, keep the will of fire burning strong and keep that blonde Uchiha in line, Dobarama said. He's in good hands Nadaim Sama and so is this village. And take care of my Raijin no Ken it was a gift from my father. Dobarama as he turned to ash and was no more. Then Hinata felt a call presence and she saw Naruto run over to Sarutobi with a cry of, Jigi. Hinata ran after her boyfriend and they saw Minato standing there not moving. Naruto tried to get to Sarutobi but an invisible barrier pushed him back. Don't bother Naruto, this Hinegami prevents interference with contracts, Minato said sadly. This is Sundaime Sama's path to walk now, it's over. The Sinigami's hand reaches through Sarutobi's soul and rips part of his shirt and then inserts his hidden grasp into Orochimaru. What is this feeling? This is bad. Orochimaru lifts right hand and the Kusanagi blade lifts into the air then shoots towards Sarutobi and the Sinigami's hand starts retracting pulling Orochimaru's soul out. Die. Orochimaru and Sarutobi call out as their techniques start taking effect. Enma who has seen the hidden danger reverts to his monkey form and tries to grab the blade and succeeds but unfortunately it still makes contact with Sarutobi's left lung and he coughs out more blood. Old man why didn't you dodge it? The Sinigami's hand resumes motion drawing the soul out. Shiki Fujin, in exchange for the sealing techniques effect, you must hand your hand your own soul over to the Sinigami. It's a technique that costs the user his life. Orochimaru struggles to make a hand sign but nothing happens. I can't use my jutsu. There was no need to dodge the blade my fate is sealed. When the seal is complete, my soul will be consumed. It's the technique of the hero who saved this village. You will die with me using that technique. So this is the jutsu that sealed the QB. I will now tear your soul out of your body, then seal it. My body isn't moving. The Sinigami's hand keeps retracting. You should see it by now, since your soul is already halfway out. Those who have their souls sealed with this technique, can never go to heaven and instead suffer inside the Sinigami's stomach. The souls of the sealer and the sealed are intertwined in hate, and are forever locked in combat. Then Orochimaru sees the Sinigami floating behind Sarutobi. That thing, is the Sinigami. Don't screw with me, you old geezer. Like I will let you have your way. Then he flexes his index and middle finger on his right hand and the Kusanagi inches forward and Sinigami's hand inches forward returning Orochimaru's soul slightly to its husk. Hurry up! And die! Orochimaru smiles darkly. Kurama vs Shukaku and Gara. The two bija clash tearing apart the landscape with each attack. Kurama raked Shukaku across the face who countered with an air bullet which Kurama blasted apart with a roar and smacked Shukaku with his tails. You know this isn't much fun, right? Kurama asked. Well to be fair Shukaku and I aren't really trying. Gara countered as his transformed body fired of a wave of sand. Kurama unleashed a wave of blue fire to counter it. I know but I'm still kinda bored, I'm gonna just finish this off. Yeah, I guess we've fought enough. Okay, this will hurt just warning you. Kurama inhaled building up a huge amount of his chakra. Oh boy. Gara braced himself. Kitsune Kaden, Hiran. Kitsune fire style, firestorm. Back with Orochimaru and Sarutobi. You sure are persistent, Sarutobi sensei. Orochimaru flexes his hands again trying to force the blade further into Sarutobi's heart. However the blade doesn't move and no matter how many times Orochimaru gestures nothing happens. You still don't understand, Orochimaru. Konoha is my home, and I am its foundation. That's why I said I would smash that foundation. As long as the villagers are fighting to protect their important comrades you won't destroy this village. I don't know about that. Don't underestimate the Hokage. Then the Sinigami's arm starts ripping Orochimaru's soul from his husk again. Impossible how are you? You shouldn't have any chakra left. Chakra and ninjutsu aren't the only things that determine a shinobi's strength. Sarutobi coughs up more blood as he feels his life force draining out of him. It seems I don't have the strength to drag out all of your soul. However your ambitions ends here. Sarutobi roars out. One. It's not over yet. Orochimaru yells. My ambitions will not end yet. I will hand down your punishment for drowning yourself in ninjutsu. I will take away all the techniques you have. What did you say? Then with a last ditch effort drags Orochimaru's soul arms out further and then the Sinigami cuts down with his knife slicing away the soul behind Orochimaru's arms. The seal is set. Sarutobi shouts and then the seal symbol appears on his stomach as Orochimaru's arms turn purple and decrepit. My arms. Orochimaru watches as his arms die before his eyes. There you have it. Your arms are useless to you now. And without your arms you will never be able to form another hand sign, ninjutsu is forever out of your reach. The destruction of Konoha has failed, you old geezer. 
Give me back my arms, you're a fool Orochimaru, my only regret is that we can't die together. Sarutobi's voice grows older as his soul is devoured, you near dead geezer. How dare you take my ninjutsu from me. Orochimaru shouts as Sarutobi drops to the ground he looks at Naruto and Hinata who had tears in their eyes, farewell Naruto, Hinata I leave the future of this village to you. Then the sun daime Hokage, Sarutobi Haruzen dropped to the floor, dead. Naruto's rage exploded and the invisible barrier that kept him from dashing forward fell and Naruto formed a Rasengan and channeled all five elemental affinities and dashed towards Orochimaru and slammed the attack into him. Shin, Rasengan. God, Rasengan, A.N. Creator Slate Rasengan got a name change I like this one better, Orochimaru was ripped apart and in a final cry of pain he was reduced to nothingness then the attack exploded and destroyed the barrier and Naruto looked at the sound ninja his Rinnegan glowing. Drown in despair. This is the power of Naruto Otsutsuki, divine power. Naruto unleashed a blast of chakra causing the sound ninja to tremble in fear. If you wish to live, then flee and cling to your pathetic lives. The sound ninja force started to back up and Naruto looked at his father then back at the sound ninja. What do you think Tosan should I let them live? Why not, they can't hurt you anyway so let them live and remember this day if they ever think about threatening your comrades again. Naruto noted and the sound ninja fled as Naruto gave them a look that clearly said. Leave or die. Minato and Naruto looked at each other. My son, there is so much I would like to say, so much I would like to apologize for, but I haven't the time, I must return to the Sinigami's stomach. Naruto started crying and he hugged his father and Minato hugged him back and the Sinigami rolled his eyes at this sad scene. Chop, chop I've got things to do moral and they aren't sit here and watch you two cry over the unfairness of death. The Sinigami said, you can't have him. Naruto growled and the Sinigami narrowed his eyes at Naruto. Mortal you've got some serious balls, but what is a 14 year old going to do against a god this? Naruto glared and weaved two hand signs. Ghetto, Rin Tensei no Jutsu. Just like with Kushina, Minato started steaming and the cracks closed and the whites of his eyes returned to their normal white color. A few seconds later Minato Namikaze was alive once more, the Sinigami groaned and face bomb. Damn Rin again wield breath. The Sinigami thought at the paperwork he was going to have to deal with. Well seeing as you aren't dead anymore I'm going to have to leave here empty handed, Minato Namikaze you are free to go and your contract is rescinded, and smaller brat, if it weren't for the fact that you indirectly traded Orochimaru for your father I'd be pretty pissed so yeah, don't do that again. The Sinigami vanished and Naruto looked at his father who laughed at what his son did and gave him a nagi and the two Namikaze men dashed off to where they were needed to repel the invasion while Hinata shook her hand and jumped off to help out where she could. Time skip one day later. The whole village gathered for Sarutobi's funeral. The civilian council tried to make the main focus Sasuke but the shinobi council shut that down saying the shinobi no kami was more important. Today we are gathered, to mourn the passing of the Sandaime and all those who perished in the invasion. Homura. Sarutobi's teammate, said and the sky started raining and Kakashi looked up, even the heavens weep. Kakashi thought as she watched Naruto put a hand on Konohamaru's shoulder as the boy wept at the death of his grandfather. He was true shinobi giving his life to protect this village and stop a traitor to this village. Homura continued and Naruto scowled slightly but shrugged and let it slide. Kinda mean to give your achievement to someone else, Lobo said since his Jin Shuriki's rage and sorrow. I know but in all honesty that kill should have been his to make. Naruto responded and walked forward and placed a flower on the coffins and offered a small prayer and shed a tear at the loss and then walked aside and let Hinata place her own flower and she offered her own prayer. After a few hours later the funeral ended and the council had gathered for an emergency meeting to decide on a new Hokage. Donzo smiled as he saw his opportunity to become Hokage, especially with the fire daimyo there. With the death of Hiruzen we need a new Hokage, Donzo said and he got murmurs of approval from everyone. Yes, that is correct Donzo, Homura said. I nominate Donzo Shirama for the position. Just then the doors opened and a cold laugh echoed around the room and three people walked in. Did you hear that Soichi? Donzo Shirama, Hokage? A distinctly female voice called humor and disdain clear. That old warhawk would plunge Konoha into a war faster that you and I can eat ramen. A male voice responded. Besides with me around, their problem of voting for a Hokage is resolved. A third voice said and the door closed and it was revealed that the group of people was Minato, Kushina and Naruto. Why why Yondame-sama? Several members of the council said in shock. Yondame-sama is here to kill the demon. A member of the council said only to have Minato slam a Rasengan into that man's head. The next person who calls my son a demon will share a more painful death. Minato growled. Why why your SS son? Yes, 
Naruto is my son and the only one who I could ever trust with the burden that I gave him. Minato started pacing his chakra flaring occasionally as he tried to keep his rage in check. Anyone care to explain why my last wish wasn't heeded? He's a monster. The only monsters are the ones in the chairs of the civilian council. Minato countered then he stopped and laughed darkly. For those of you who don't know anything about Fu and Jutsu let me give you a rundown of the basics. If you seal a kunai in a scroll does the scroll become a kunai? No it just holds the kunai, correct, Minato said. While I won't go into the specifics of the hacky phone but it basically acts like an advanced storage scroll and do you know what happens to the kunai when its scrolls is destroyed? The kunai pops out. A second said as it slowly dawned on the civilians. So if we killed Naruto. A third started. The Kyuubi would have been released and only an Uzumaki can hold the Kyuubi and my son is Kushina's child and Kushina is my wife. Why your wife? Mebuki said enraged. Yes we were married in secret but in the presence of the fire daimyo. By the way nice to see you again Daimyo-sama. Nice to see you again Minato. We married in secret to protect Kushina from my enemies. Had we known. It doesn't matter, Minato shouted. I asked him to be held as a hero and you all spat on the wish and treated him like dirt. No even dirt gets more respect than he's received from the older generation. Minato finally stopped pacing and a small smile tugged at his lips. I find it wonderfully ironic that your children and the newer generation has decided to disobey the wishes of the civilian council and have welcomed him as the hero he is. Even those who have once scorned him now praise him for his valiant defense of this village. Hundreds if not thousands of innocent lives were defended thanks to my son having thousands upon thousands of cage bunshines to help guide them to shelters and protect them from enemy shinobi who tried to kill them. I'm taking back my seat and I'll be making a lot changes. Anyone got a problem with that? Minato glared unleashed a wave of ki nobody spoke but the grin on the shinobi council's face was unmistakable. The Ondaimei, the Kiroi Senko, hero of the third shinobi war was back and he was not happy about how the civilians had tried to destroy his home. Chapter 14, Konoha, A Village Reborn Time skipped three days later, Minato fired the civilian council and the advisors and disbanded any power they had. The academy standards skyrocketed and academy students were taking d rank missions to stop them from piling up. Currently Minato had, Shikamaru, Hinata and Naruto in front of him while his cage bunshines waged a very one-sided war against the paperwork and his main attention was on the three before him, Naruto Otsutsuki, Hinata Hyuga, and Shikamaru Nara. For your performance in the Chunin exams and your service in Defend the Village in a time of crisis I hereby promote you all to the rank of Chunin. Minato said and handed them all a Chunin vests. Thank you Hokage-sama. All three Chunin said bowing. Naruto, Hinata please stay behind, Shikamaru you are dismissed. Shikamaru led and then Minato's expression softened as he looked at his son. My son, you have done wonderfully, you have made me so proud. Just then an Anbu walked in. Hokage-sama, the former civilian council has asked to meet with you and the Shinobi council to discuss a matter of most importance. The Anbu agent said bowing. Very well. Anything else? They have requested the presence of Hinata and Naruto. Very well I will be there shortly. Minato stood up and Naruto and Hinata followed him and they walked into the chambers where the shinobi council was assembled, Minato nodded to Naruto who walked toward the chair of the Otsutsuki clan. Minato sat in his chair and a few minutes later the former civilian council walked in. Minato looked down at them a growl clear in his throat. What do you want this time? Hokage-sama, Mebuki said bowing. We are here to bring charges against Hinata Hyuga for clan extermination. Naruto growled at this but no one heard him but Hinata felt his rage. Very well speak, Minato sighed and motioned to Hinata to stand by a desk and she did. Now pick one representative for the exterminated clan. The civilians talked among themselves and eventually Mebuki was chosen. Present your case. Four days ago, Hinata Hyuga faced off against Sasuke Uchiha in the Chunin selection exams and, in one-on-one -on -one combat, killed him. Upon further medical evaluation it was revealed that he had no ability to reproduce and no matter we did we couldn't extract genetic material from his loins. Naruto got up and smiled sickly laughing. That would be my doing. After Sasuke Uchiha raped Sakura Haruno and attempted to rape two others I placed a number of seals on his body including a sterilization seal. Because rape is not a crime that forgive, Naruto said growling. You made it so Sasuke couldn't reproduce. Yes I did. And before you start screaming again I want to point out that both my actions and Hinata's can't be punished as they were under the waiver that we signed before entering the forest of death. Very true, Shikaku said and the shinobi council nodded in agreement. Mebuki's face went red with rage but didn't say anything as Minato had stripped them of all power. If that is all then we are dismissed, Minato said then he stood up and the shinobi council went to leave but Inoiki spoke. Actually Hokage-sama, 
The Yamanaka clan wishes to press charges against the Uchiha clan for the physiological damage done to my daughter. Very well, present your case. Minato responded. In the forest of death Sasuke Uchiha attempted to rape my daffer, and while I can't have anything extreme done due to the waiver I can push for the Uchiha clan to pay for her rehabilitation. Your evidence? Testimony from Naruto Otsutsuki. Hinata Hyuga and Mind Diving confirms this and Mind Diving my daffer as well and several other Yamanaka confirm this. Very well, Mabuki how do you respond? The late Sasuke was influenced by Orochimaru's curse mark. Mabuki responded. Objection, Naruto said standing up. The council recognizes Naruto Otsutsuki, state your objection. I have studied the curse mark on both Sasuke Uchiha and Anko Mitarashi and after talking to Jiraiya of the Sanin I was able to figure out what it does. The seal only enhances rage and gives the barrier a boost in chakra and it is based on sage chakra and doesn't control the mind at all. Are you sure? Yes I communicated with my mother who is an Uzumaki and Jiraiya of the Sanin who confirmed my results. Three seals masters confirmed this so that settles it Sasuke was in full control and awareness of his actions, Minato said. How does the Shinobi Council vote? One by one the council voted that the Uchiha clan should pay for Ino's rehab. Mebuki looked at Homura who was called forward who wrote a check for Inoiki from the Uchiha clan account. Then the council disbanded and Minato, Naruto, and Hinata returned to the Hokage office. Well after that I think it's time to told you why I need you here. I have a mission for you, the two of you and one other person will be going to find Tsunade and return her to the village. I heard that Tsunade-sama doesn't want her return to the village, we might have to use force, Hinata said. Then do so if you must but try diplomacy first. Who is going with us? Naruto asked. That would be me, Gaki. A third voice said from the window and the all saw Jiraiya sitting there. Aw oh man, we have to go with her asenin? Naruto went but Minato shot him a look that said deal with it. Oi, Jiraiya said. Your mother and I help you perfect applying few in jutsu without ink and this is the thanks I get. Kachan did most of the work. Naruto muttered and he not laughed. Anyway. Minato coughed getting the group's attention. The three of you will leave in one hour for a few weeks with this notices for Tsunade to return. Minato handed Jiraiya a paper with his signature and the Hokage seal on it. Hi Hokage-sama. Naruto and Hinata said then they left to pack and Jiraiya went to leave but Minato coughed again gaining Jiraiya's attention. If I hear you touched my son to your research during this trip I'll make what Kushina-chan did when she found out you peeked on us during our honeymoon look like a paper cut. Minato threatened and Jiraiya gulped at the threat and nodded in the left. Time skipped three days later. Naruto and Hinata were sitting in a field meditating while Jiraiya watched them while Hinata and Naruto used mental training using projection to advance their skills. After a few minutes of silence both Hinata and Naruto's eyes snapped open. Two, that was intense, to think that our bodies had that much potential inside them, Hinata said standing up. It's incredible to say the least to think that the body of a shinobi could wield both energies independently such untapped potential I can't believe that we turned such power to something as weak as chakra. Naruto said placing his hand on his sword and felt it pulse in his hand but nothing else happened. What are you two talking about? Jiraiya asked. You know what chakra is composed of right? Naruto asked dusting off his pants. Spiritual energy and physical energy. Correct but what most people don't know is that those two weren't always intertwined and not even Hagoromo knew this and we have found a way to temporarily separate them and this makes us stronger than even Tsunade but that's just with physical. With spiritual we can breath life into a weapon and give it a soul and a name. Hinata said. While neither Naruto nor I can use this completely yet we can make ourselves stronger than before. It might take years to complete but I hope to awaken the power that has been lost for years. Naruto looked at his sword and then the group of three continued on their way. A few miles down the road Naruto felt a familiar pulse of chakra and stopped. What's wrong Naruto? Jiraiya asked. An agent that I sent on a mission has just reported success and I must meet with him alone. Naruto walked to the side of the road and after a few seconds later Black Zetsu emerged from the ground. Naruto-sama, Zetsu said then bowed. You have what I asked for? Hi right here. Zetsu handed Naruto a vial of blood and Naruto laughed and walked over a clearing created a cage bunshine and weaved hand signs. Kushios, Edo Tensei. The dirt rose off the ground and gathered and formed the body of Madara Uchiha. Well certainly took him a while, Madara said then he looked down and saw he was in his old body and groaned. Could he at least have made a new body for me? Your Madara Uchiha. Naruto said raising an eyebrow. I am, who's asking? Naruto started busting out laughing and fell on the ground laughing and rolling around. No fucking way, Naruto said between gasps of air. Stop, Madara yelled. Who's gonna make me? Naruto countered. You? Naruto and then held out his hand and a red ball of chakra burst to life in hand. Yotan, Kase Kano Ibuki. Yang style, breath of revitalization. 
Naruto exhaled and the red of chakra coated Madara and in a few seconds he was back in his prime. Incredible that was some power. Thank you but I didn't bring you back to tell me how powerful I am. What do you mean? I brought you back from the dead to answer some questions. I'm not going to answer questions from some no-name brat. Madara started to walk away but Naruto held out his hand and Madara froze. Unfortunately, I'm not giving you a choice. Naruto-sama I'd explain to him what's going on. Zetsu said. Zetsu? Madara said looking at his creation. Madara, your servant doesn't obey you anymore so you want to test your luck against me? Madara looked at Naruto and unleashed his chakra and attempted to break free but Naruto countered with his own and both stood in silence glaring at each other. Then Madara dropped to his knees. You're not bad young one to be able to force me into submission that's a rare trait. Madara sat down and looked at Naruto. So you wanted answers to what questions I wonder. What is your goal in life? What do you view as important? Naruto sat down as well. Well that's simple, the way to peace is through the dream of the mind which I will achieve with the power of the Jubi. Mugen Tsukuyomi. So you're the one Black Zetsu was manipulating to revive Kaguya. What? Madara asked looking at Black Zetsu who was rubbing his head embarrassed. Yes that was my goal before Naruto-sama overpowered Kaguya's will with his own. So what was your way of doing this? After you activated the Mugen Tsukuyomi I was going to stab you in the back, quite literally, and inject Kaguya's will into you and she would overpower yours and she would be reborn. So let me guess you tried to stab him in the back and he reversed the process. Yep, well, that's why you're working for him, Madara said. Yes that's why he is and I would like to know who you left your plan to because... Zetsu won't tell me. Uchiho Bito, he's the one masquerading as me until I'm revived. Oh well shit should I tell Kakashi or should I keep that a secret? I don't know pop, it might shatter him but at the same time Obito has most likely has fallen into a dark place and might use Kakashi's guilt against him. Then we tell him. Better to hear it from a friend than a foe. A um, mirth to brat, Madara said waving his hand in front of Naruto's eyes. i uh, sorry about that. Naruto rubbed the back of his head. You're a Jinchuriki, Madara said it wasn't a question. Yeah I am. What's it to you? Which bijou, Jubi? So you can read the Uchiha stone tablet? I have your eyes but only stronger. Naruto activated his EMS and Madara narrowed his eyes. You stole my Rinnegan from Nagato? So you are the one who gave Pain the Rinnegan. Pain? I guess that's what he's calling himself. So you are the Indra transmigration. I can see it. So you know about the brothers. Kaguya was the one manipulating Indra from the beginning and Black Zetsu over here was the one trying to pull the strings. Oh so now you pay attention to me. Black Zetsu said whining. Shut up. Madara and Naruto said simultaneously and Zetsu slumped his head. So you think that the Mugen Tsukuyomi will lead to peace? Naruto asked. Yes I do and if you are the Jubi Jinchuriki then you have exactly what I need. Madara lunged but Naruto grabbed Madara's throat and slammed him to the ground. Don't even try it. Naruto growled. A hey, well let it never be said I didn't try. Madara said and Naruto glared at him. Well I think I have only a few more questions and then I'll have my answer. What would they be? I want to know your past and why you see as precious. Well since you ask I'll tell you, as soon as you let go of my throat and let me up. Promise not to try anything? I swear on my blood of a Nuchiha. Naruto let go of Madara and they both sat down facing each other. You got any tea? Um, yeah, several kinds what hits your fancy? Lavender. Naruto opened a scroll and channeled chakra into the kanji for lavender. Then a small box appeared and Naruto took out a pot and two cups and filled the pot with water and prepared the tea. When he was done he handed a cup to Madara who smiled. Such preparation, few master tea ceremonies I am pleased to see that the art hasn't died. Thank you now, your story. Okay let's start from the beginning. I was born during the Warring States period, and was the eldest of my father, Tajima Uchiha, who had five sons. Me and my brothers grew up on the battlefield waging constant war with our rivals, the Sanju. Three of my brothers died young, leaving me with only my younger brother, Izuna. Izuna and I became very close through their shared loss and constantly competed with each other to get stronger. This, combined with his naturally strong chakra, enabled me to defeat adult Senju in battle and develop a reputation as a genius. During my infrequent downtime, I met a boy my own age, Hashirama. We quickly developed a friendly rivalry, be it skipping stones or urinating in rivers, like me. Hashirama was also a shinobi who had lost his brothers on the battlefield. Together we imagined a world where children like themselves wouldn't need to fight. As a precaution, we did not divulge our family names, but nevertheless discovered each other's identities I was a Nuchiha, Hashirama was a Senju, it was their duty to kill each other, even if they were friends. Needing to choose between my family and my dreams of peace, I chose to end his friendship with Hashirama so I would have no reservations over killing him in the future a resolve strong enough to awaken my Sharingan. Madara paused taking a sip of tea inside. Stupid Edo Tensei, 
I can even enjoy tea anymore. Such a pass to think you were friends with Hashirama in your childhood. Yeah it was hard to believe for anyone who knew us. Several times over the future Hashirama and I clashed until one day we became clan head and I had gained the eternal Mangekyo and clashed with Hashirama one more time and like many of our clashes it was exhilarating for me but in the end, my back touched the ground first. I looked at Hashirama and he asked me is there no way we can have peace? I told him that there was no way to show each other our guts and I had nothing left to live for as I lost Izuna. He pleaded with me for reach an agreement with him and I gave him a choice. Kill yourself or kill your brother. Hashirama choice the former and just before he plunged the kunai into his gut I grabbed it and stopped him. I told him that I had seen his guts and then we formed an alliance and you know how it went from there I assume. Yes I do and I must say your clash at the valley of the end was incredible and I was shocked by the power that you showed. You saw our battle? I would have sensed you. I only saw it as a memory Hagoromo showed it to me in order to prove what happens when Indra and Asura clash. Well I guess I have answered your question about my past and no matter what the books say about me I always loved my little brother so losing him was kinda the final straw in my faith in humanity, Madara said and then he looked at Naruto who sighed. I have my answer and I will stop Obito and his plan and end threat of the Akatsuki and end the threats and hatred of the shinobi world. Good luck young one, I don't think that you will but if you can that would be a sight to see. Madara smiled and Naruto dispelled Edo Tensei and Madara departed from the world and ended. Well Zetsu you have no need to be here so you are dismissed and keep Obito in the dark about this alright. I understand Naruto-sama. Black Zetsu said and he departed and then Naruto rejoined Hinata and Jiraiya and they went on their way. Time skipped five days later. The group of three reached Anzaku town and then they continued walking and Naruto laughed as he got a sense of two high chakra levels not too far from him. Naruto walked with Hinata and just looked back and smiled then continued, Itachi and Kisame. Itachi and Kisame were standing on a cliff outside the village and looked at the sprawl below them. Do you think he senses us? Kisame asked Itachi. No doubt we are too close to him now I have no illusion that he senses our chakra, Itachi said and he looked at Kisame. Now let's go to a bar, and find some girls. You wanna get laid? Kisame gives Itachi a weird look. And Itachi smacks Kisame upside the head. No you idiot we have to separate Naruto from Jiraiya, Naruto is difficult enough to deal with as it is we do not need any further complications. Once we have separated Naruto from Hinata as well, to capture Naruto we will need to fight him on his own. Alright which step first? Jiraiya, then Hinata. Right. Itachi and Kisame went off toward a bar. Ten minutes later, Naruto and Hinata were in a training field and Naruto looked at Hinata a determined look on his face. So when did you do it? Naruto asked, do what? Hinata asked confused, switch out for Hinata? Naruto said and disappeared and ran the cage bunshine through with his sword and it disappeared in an explosion of smoke. Then Itachi and Kisame appeared in front of him and Naruto growled, what's wrong kid? Kisame asked tauntingly, scared? Not on your life, but I warn you if you have harmed even a single hair on her head you won't last long against me. Naruto warned a few seconds of silence passed and Naruto created a sealless cage bunshine. Find her, got it. The cage bunshine responded and vanished in a flash of light. Hiroshin? Kisame said as he looked worried. You don't think I wasn't aware of your plan? You are after me because of the power within me but not the same power I once wielded something far more deadly. I know that Hinata is safe the bunshine has informed of that and with the power she has you either caught her off guard or she let me fight you on my own and do that I will. Naruto unleashed the power of his chakra. Amina Minaka, heavenly governing inside, instantly the world was transformed and in a flash of light they were in a frozen tundra. W what? Kisame said shocked. Haha ha, surprise this is true divine power. Naruto entered his Rikudo mode and floated up into the air and placed his hands together. Senpo, Inten Rea. Naruto fired the blast of purple lightning and Kisame dashed forward and swiped Seimata and the attack was absorbed. Sorry kid but ninjutsu is useless against me thanks to Seimata. I know but can you control Senjutsu? Naruto asked raising an eyebrow. What do you mean? Look at Seimata. Naruto smiled and Kisame looked in Seimata and saw that it was turning to stone and Naruto laughed. I'd throw Seimata away before the Senjutsu chakra turns you to stone as well. Kisame tossed the blade and Naruto smiled. What did you do to Seimata? Senjutsu chakra is hard to control and I put enough chakra into that blast to overwhelm even the chakra of the late son Daime Hokage, back in his prime. Naruto crossed his arms and smiled. You brat. Kisame weaved more hand signs. Sutan, Sweek out and no jutsu. Water style, water shark bomb. The shark made it two feet before freezing solid and Naruto just knocked it aside with the back of his hand. What? How? You think this ice is just for show? No this cold is real as is the world you exist in. Kisame jumped at Naruto and threw a punch which Naruto responded with by blasting back a thrust of his bomb. 
Kisame charged again and threw punch after punch which Naruto dodged and when Kisame threw a kick Naruto flicked it away blocking the attack. Naruto grabbed Kisame by the throat and laughed this is what happens when mortals challenge gods. Naruto suddenly felt Itachi charge him then was full Nelson which Naruto easily escaped and grabbed Itachi's collar and slammed the two together by their heads then he kicked Itachi and then sent Kisame flying in the other direction. Too easy. Naruto smiled and then clapped his hands together. Chibaku Tensei. A huge sphere of gravity flew from Naruto's hand and the huge glacier started to clump together and a gigantic mass of frozen rock and stone and Naruto laughed as Itachi and Kisame looked at him in horror. Itachi we got to work together to attack him. Kisame were clearly no match for him he's toying with us. Itachi said his voice full of despair. How right you are. Naruto smiled and clapped his hands together and laughed as he threw a lot black rods and they impaled the limbs of Kisame and Itachi paralyzing them. Naruto slammed his hands together and would roots thicker than anything stronger in existence. Naruto looked at the 2s rank shinobi before him and Naruto smiled and then a black void opened behind Itachi and he fell into it. Kisame looked at Naruto who laughed and then he thrust his hand down and the gigantic rock fell towards Kisame and Naruto looked at Kisame and opened the black void and slipped into it with one final laugh. Desert Realm Itachi was in the sand with the rods in his limbs and then Naruto appears and Naruto exited his Rikudo mode and looked at him. Why let me live? Itachi asked, because I wanted to show you what happened why Sasuke was killed. Naruto pulled out a vial with Sasuke eyes. Itachi looked shocked and Naruto replaced Itachi's eyes with Sasuke's eyes. Suddenly Itachi's world changed and he witnessed the horrors that had been witnessed by the eye he now possessed. Why would he do that? The darkness that you instilled in his heart was too much and too strong and he got corrupted by it. Now warn your leader Nagato that your organization's days are numbered and I will end you all. So I offer you a choice stand with me or be destroyed Itachi. I will give you time to make up your mind but until then, buzz off. Naruto thrust his hand and Itachi was returned to a field where he had chosen to attack Naruto. I have to go warn Pain-sama. Itachi thought then he ran off and thought about what Naruto had shown him and his eyes evolved to the eternal state. Even with the Ena no Mung Ekyo I'm no match for Naruto what I saw today was pure divine power plan and simple. Itachi thought to himself as he returned to the nearest Akatsuki base where Pain's hologram was waiting. Itachi you are late and where is Kisume? Pain demanded. Kisume is dead, the Kyubijin Chiriki killed him. I don't think he's just the Kyubijin Chiriki he has revealed powers that rival the legendary Rikudo Senen himself. Pain's eyes widened slightly which Itachi didn't miss but he didn't say anything. Naruto is beyond even you Pain-sama he tore us apart and he wasn't even trying. He has so much power I don't want to even think of what would happen to whoever he was fighting if he ever got serious. You can't be serious Itachi. I am Pain Sama, he would destroy the Akatsuki without effort. Do you have any good news? While we searched for Naruto in Konoha I managed to snatch my father's eyes and achieve the Ayan no Mong Ekyo. Itachi showed Pain the Ayan no Mong Ekyo in his eyes. Then we will have to bide our time to find a replacement for Kisame until then we will have to put our hunt for the Bijou on hold. Very well Pain Sama. The holographic figure vanished and thought about why Pain seemed so nervous about Naruto's power. Itachi reached into his pocket and felt a scroll there that he knew wasn't there when he arrived in the cave. Itachi opened it carefully and saw a note written. Itachi, with your new eyes only you should be able to read this scroll, as you have no doubt guessed my powers do indeed stem from the Rikudo Senen himself and I am not the Kyubijin Churiki any longer a while ago I became the Jubijin Churiki and that is the power that your organization seeks to claim. This is impossible. The tablet will tell you of the Mugen Tsukuyomi and the truth behind the Rinnegan. If you want to live to see old age meet with Black Zetsu in five days time and give him your answer, if you are a much a hater of war as I am you will make the right choice. Naruto Otsutsuki So this is make or break for the story of Itachi Uchiha eh? Well I better start training with my new eyes to make sure I am ready to fight when the time comes to use their power. Itachi thought as he walked off chuckling to himself. Danzuki Town, Naruto. Hinata and Jiraiya walked into a bar after finally tracking down Tsunade and her assistant Shizune. Hey, Tsunade. Jiraiya called out. Jiraiya. Tsunade called out shocked. Long time no see Tsunade hi I'm, I finally found you. Boy, am I tired. Tsunade and Jiraiya looked at one another as they sat down. Who are the brats? Naruto Otsutsuki, pleased to meet you, Naruto said rolling his neck. Hinata Huka, Hinata said. Otsutsuki that's not a name I've ever heard. Tsunade said, It's the name of our ancestor the Rikudo Senin, Naruto said. Well now that introductions are over I'm here to tell you why we went out all this way to find you. Naruto nodded at Jiraiya who pulled out the letter and handed it to Tsunade. Tsunade opened it up and started reading it and then she sneered. An order to return signed by the Yondame Hokage. Tsunade growled out. 
If you're going to go to all this trouble to get me to return to the village then at least use a cage's signature that isn't dead. My dad isn't dead at least not anymore. What do you mean? Naruto closed his eyes then opened again revealing the Rinnegan. Thanks to the power of these eyes, the Rinnegan which can even revive the dead and when the later Ochimaru summoned my dad I used the power of these eyes to revive him. Impossible. Allow me to show you the power of these eyes. Naruto walked outside and the rest followed him and Naruto clapped his hands together. Banned Tsu Sozio no Jutsu. Then in a few seconds two statutes emerged and they were of Minato and Kushina holding hands Minato had a kunai in his hand and Kushina had her blade. H how? Using the spiritual energy which forms the basis of Yin Chakra to create physical forms from nothingness. Then, through the application of vitality, and the physical energy which forms the basis of Yang Chakra, I can breathe life into the resulting creations, if I so desired. Naruto shrugged. Could Nagato do this Jiraiya? Tsunade asked rounding on her old teammate. I don't know I've never seen or heard anything about the full power of the Rinnegan. Nagato is not the original owner of his eyes and as such the power he could use with them was limited, Naruto said. How do you know that? Tsunade asked. Those eyes once belonged to Madara Uchiha a few days ago I reanimated him and had a chat then when we were done I dispelled the Edo Tensei. Everyone except Hinata looked at Naruto shocked. Why did you reanimate the most powerful shinobi ever born and why didn't you tell me? Jiraiya asked. I didn't view it as important at all. Naruto shrugged. Why don't you look surprised Hinata? Tsunade asked. Because Naruto-kun told me already, Hinata said simply and looked at the others with a casual look on her face. Now Tsunade-sama I would like to make a request of you. Oh and what's that? I wanted to fight you one-on-one -on -one and see who is the better medic nin. Oh you're a medic nin too? I was trained by the best and I want to see who is better. Tsunade and Hinata looked at each other and without warning they clashed both attacking without pause Naruto followed the attacks with his eyes and Hinata landed a swift punch on Tsunade and she got sent flying back and then she got back up and cracked her joints then a sharp pain rocketed through her body. W what? Surprised? Hinata asked. With some training I was able to limit the presence of spiritual chakra in my body which gives me a punch even stronger than yours. Not bad but not as good as I am. Tsunade charged and they continued to attack each other and Naruto watched with his girlfriend and fight and laughed. What's so funny? Shizune asked. Hinata's holding back and if she really wanted to Tsunade would be dead. You're not bad girly gut let's take it up a notch. Tsunade said and then she charged again and Hinata activated her Byakugan and Tsunade backed up in fear and Hinata charged in. Jmyukenho. Hakunayu Hakso, Nishu, Yanchu, Hakso, Jirikshu, Sunjunisho, Rakuju Ionsho, Hakunayu Hakso. Tsunade got sent flying back and coughed up blood. Tsunade crashed into wall which crumpled on top of her. H how? Like I said I made myself stronger than you and incorporated it into my juke and I've done some serious crippling of your body's organs. Damn I didn't want to use this so quickly but I have no choice. Tsunade formed a hand sign and her diamond on her forehead started spreading over her body. Ninpo Sozio say say, Byakugo no Jutsu. The wounds under her skin started healing. Well that's quite the Jutsu but try this one on for size. Hinata channeled chakra into her eyes and then her chakra vanished completely Naruto could see her and sense her clear as day. Where did Hinata go? Tsunade asked. What do you mean she's right in front of you? No she's not kid, Jiraiya said. Rimbo. Naruto said shocked. Rimbo? She is now in the invisible world of Limbo Bachan you're in for a fight with a foe you can't see, sense or touch. As Naruto predicted the fight turned one-sided very quickly and it ended when Tsunade fell unconscious from chakra exhaustion. Jiraiya went to carry Tsunade but Shizune stopped him and took her teacher to the hotel room. Time skipped three days later. Naruto, Hinata, Jiraiya, Tsunade and Shizune were walking back towards Konoha and Hinata looked at Tsunade and smiled. Thank you for teaching me Tsunade Sensei I've learned a lot, Hinata said. You are by far one of the greatest students I've ever had you mastered my teachings well, Tsunade said. But you still have much to learn my young pupil. Well I'm still trying to figure out a lot of things myself. After a while they arrived in the Hokage's office and when they opened the door Naruto and Hinata turned red faced and Jiraiya laughed while Tsunade and Shizune were impassive. Minato and Kushina were locked in a heavy makeout session and didn't even notice that their son was in the room. Kachan. Tosan, Naruto said and then he covered his eyes and Minato and Kushina separated blushing. Sorry Soichi I forgot that you were coming back today. Minato said. Well you were back and you brought Tsunade Sensei just like Minato-kun asked, Kushina said. Sensei I think that you have some cleaning up to do at the hospital because they have forgotten their oath. Tsunade was pissed and she motioned to Shizune who followed her. Well this will soon be a village reborn after all, Jiraiya said. Chapter 15 
Kabutamaru. Time skip three days later Odogakur. Kabuto was sitting in front of the sound nin four and he was melting down the remains of the gigantic white snake into a vial of blood. I want the four of you to go to Konoha and kidnap the Hyuga clan's youngest daughter Hanabi Hyuga and retrieve the corpse of Sasuke Uchiha. I intend to clone him and gain the Sharingan and the Byakugan. Hi Kabuto-sama, Sakan said. What are our parameters? Do what you must but do not kill the girl. Understood. Sakan and the rest of the Sound Ninja 4 walked out and started headed off toward Konoha. Konoha. Tsunade had reigned in the hospital staff and many lost their jobs or lives after her cleansing the staff shaped up and Tsunade made it her personal mission to finally have her dream realized, to make a medic a mandatory addition to every squad. She got her wish and she started teaching many kunoichi and shinobi the art of medical ninjutsu. On this particular day she had Sakura Haruno, Ino Yamanaka and several members of the Hyuga clan and Tenten and she smiled and cracked her knuckles. All right. This won't be easy and many of you won't want to continue but in the end you will gain skills that will help save lives and keep the Konoha Shinobi fatality count from raising, Tsunade said. We're going to start with chakra control exercises and for those with training in this already will make things more advanced, but for now get started. Tsunade shouted and everyone got to work on learning what they could. Naruto and Hinata. Naruto was looking at Hinata and they both had bruises on their bodies but were both smiling. Your skills haven't all Hinata high and neither have mine but still we're so evenly matched our strength unsurpassed the only question how to get stronger? Maybe should explore our options that we discovered on our training perhaps it's time to explore the realm of the gods, Hinata said. Perhaps you're right we should get started but I don't know how. I do. Minato's voice came from behind them and behind him was the Sinigami who didn't look happy. Naruto could tell it was the Sinigami from the aura of death that surrounded him. Minato want to explain why you asked my sister to make me train this little brat and his girlfriend? The Sinigami said growling. Ah oh, don't give me that look CJU and I both know you wanted an apprentice. The Sinigami laughed and slapped Minato on the back and wiped his eyes. Oh so you figured it out eh? Very well I'll train the brats in ancient way of the awakened sword. CJ looked at Naruto and Hinata. But I warn you it won't be easy. CJ had a very sickening grin on his face. So let's get started. Time skipped three days later. Naruto was laying down on his bed and then suddenly a sound of his door being kicked open awoke Naruto and then he sprung to his feet his Sharingan ablaze and he saw Hinata there her eyes cascading tears. Hinata hi what is wrong? Hanabi, Hinata cried. She's been kidnapped and it was the sound ninja I was able to trace the chakra. I'll get her back. Naruto growled and then he started to leave but Hinata placed her hand on his shoulder. We'll get her back I'm going with you, Hinata said. Naruto nodded and they both informed Minato of the situation who told them to go and get Hanabi back. Five miles from Konoha. Let me go, Hanabi yelled at her captors who were freaky looking in the girl's eyes. Not a chance Kabuto-sama wants you for your keke genkai and if we fail he'll kill us. Sakon asked. Once Naruto ni and Hinata ni chan find you you'll be dead anyway. You think we're scared of some kid, Kitamaru said. Shit 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 how did we forget about them? Kitamaru was scared let's keep moving we don't have time to stick around. Kitamaru grabbed Hanabi and they ran off. If they catch us we're dead, if they catch us we're dead, if they catch us we're dead. Sakon kept chanting as they leapt forward. After some time Sakon froze and he looked ahead and the rest ran into him. Sakon what the hell? Tuya cursed. Ladies shouldn't tttttt Jirobo started then he saw two dark silhouettes. I gave you a warning, you chose to ignore it, Naruto said. You attacked my home threatened those precious to me and now you chose to hurt my Hinata Haim and kidnap my future Emoto. Naruto blasted them with a wave of ki. I'll slaughter you. Naruto felt the anger radiating off Hinata and he looked at her then he saw what she was looking at and he saw a trail of blood leaking from Hinabi's mouth. Who did it? Hinata asked her voice deadly cold. T the spider guy. Hinabi coughed out and Hinata's eyes widened in rage. So what if I did you wanted to fight about it? Kitamaru growled. No I don't. Hinata growled suddenly she vanished and was right behind and two of Kitamaru's arms were detached and Hinata had her sword in her hand. I want a slaughter. Hinata killed Kitamaru with a bone and Hinata looked at Tuya and then she laughed like a maniac. Who's next? I'll take the loudmouth and the two-headed freak you get the fat one, Naruto said and then he grabbed Tuya and Sakana and vanished. I guess you're next chubby. Hinata charged in and charged Chakra into her fists and smashed organs with her fists and in a few seconds Jirobo was dead. Desert Dimension Naruto was looking at his foes. So who wants to die first? I'll take him down. Sakon charged in and started to throw punches. How about a Durimi? Sakon was prepared to hit Naruto but only succeeded in hitting a blue rib cage. You're done. Naruto grabbed Sakon with his Susano. Die. Suddenly the world swirled in Naruto vast chained. Megan, Muganansa. Demonic Illusion, 
Naruto laughed and locked eyes with Tuya, Megan, Kyotenshi Ten. Genjutsu reflection, suddenly Tuya was trapped in her own Genjutsu. Really? I posses the dojutsu of the Uchiha did you think that it was that easy to trap me in a Genjutsu? Naruto smiled and stabbed Tuya and killed her. Next, Durimi, Rimbo. Naruto stopped him again. Now to get what I want from you. Naruto locked eyes with Sakon. Tsukuyomi. Sakon's eyes glazed over. What are you after and why? We were ordered by Kabuto to capture the Hyuga girl and take the blood of Sasuke Uchiha in order clone him. Kabuto-sama has the blood of Sasuke but we were required to deliver the Hyuga girl in person. Then you are dead. Naruto broke the Genjutsu and restrained Sakon with seals. Amaterasu. Sakon was ablaze and started screaming in pain. Naruto left Sakon to die in pain. With Hinata, Hinata was healing her sister's wounds and comforting the sobbing girl like any good sister would. After a few seconds Naruto reappeared in a black hole in the world and placed a hand on Hinata and smiled. Let's take her home she's had a rough day, Naruto said and then he absorbed both Hinata and Hanabi into his pocket dimension then vanished himself. Kabuto, Kabuto laughed as took the vial of blood delivered by the snake summon he sent and then held up a vial of blood labeled Hashirama and and finally a third vial of blood labeled Uzumaki. I will make a body so powerful that even Madara himself would be powerless to stop me. Kabuto laughed and got to work. Time skipped three months later. Kabuto was frustrated beyond belief he just couldn't get the combo of the Uchiha, Senju and Uzumaki to integrate into his blood he had several close calls with his life and had no answers as to why it wouldn't work. He had integrated the healing factor of the Uzumaki but it wasn't enough to stave of Hashirama's blood. Why won't this work? Kabuto shouted then he smashed the glass container and finally he started to walk away. Why? Then a cruel laugh echoed out from a corner of the room and a man with an orange mask with a spiral pattern focused around his right eye and a black cloak walked out of the wall. Do you really think Hashirama's blood is that easy to control? The man said laughing. Who are you? I am a man long forgotten by history, Madara Uchiha. Kabuto's eyes widened in horror at name as he knew that even with his power the way it was he was still no match for the Uchiha founder. Why are you here? Kabuto was sweating bullets. I am the leader of a certain organization that your former master worked for at one point. The Akatsuki. Oh shit did he come here to kill me? At this time I find myself in need of skill helped and you are a skilled shinobi so why not join? What do I get if join? Power. Once I have all the bijou I will distribute them between the members of the Akatsuki. Madara when can I join? Now. Obito smiled and then he called out. Zetsu. And the dual faced plant man emerged from the ground. Hi Madara sama? Zetsu asked. Give him Kisame's ring and we'll be on our way. Understood. Black Zetsu responded and handed Kabuto the ring with the kanji for South on it. Just remember Kabuto I am not as forgiving as pain would be betray us and I will kill you without hesitation. Obito glared at Kabuto blasting him with ki and Kabuto nodded in fear. I understand. Kabuto followed Obito out of the base only pausing to laugh at the opportunity that he had. Naruto sama can you hear me? Black Zetsu called out to his master. Loud and clear Zetsu what news do you have? Naruto's voice came in through the metal connection they had. Obito has inducted Kabuto into the Akatsuki. Kabuto is nowhere near an S rank shinobi, what has changed? It would be easier to show you. Zetsu projected the image of what Kabuto had transformed himself into. Ugly motherfucker, I'm inclined to agree with you. So the Akatsuki has put the Bijuhan on hold for three years and now they have nine members again but two work for me. That sums it up Naruto-sama. Well I am currently with Jiraiya and Hinata Haim on a three year training trip, not that I need it. I want you to keep me posted on any movements or actions the Akatsuki take and anything that Obito does or says that would lead him to figure out that I am the Jubijin Churiki. Understood Naruto Asama. Zetsu severed the connections and continued walking with Obito and Kabuto back to the nearest Akatsuki base. Chapter 16 The Future Time skip one month later. Naruto and Hinata were sitting with their swords across their laps meditating as CJ in his normal human form watched as they tried to hear the name of their swords. Naruto was making progress but Hinata was soaring and has farther than anyone had in a long time. Jiraiya was off doing what he does best, research. Naruto started to glow silver and CJ nodded in satisfaction. He's getting close I can feel it now I wonder what the name of his sword will be. CJ thought and he paced back and forth swing his scythe board out of his mind. Naruto's Mindscape When Naruto opened his eyes Naruto was standing on the side of a large skyscraper he could see Lobo's forest to the east then he looked at his surroundings trying to figure out what was going on. Naruto, a voice called and Naruto spun around and saw a man standing there. He was a lean built, and stoic middle aged man. He has pale skin, high cheekbones, stubble and long ragged black hair with brown highlights. His attire consists of a tattered white dress shirt with an upturned collar and cuffs, black pants, low-heeled boots, and a long, 
amorphous black overcoat with a burgundy highlight that flares out into ragged ends. He wears brown tinted, semi transparent wraparound sunglasses. Naruto, can you hear me? Of course I can hear you. Why wouldn't I be able to? Interesting, you can hear my voice, but I wonder, can you hear my name? The man responded, Well, what is your name and why is there a bunch of sideways skyscrapers in my head? I know where we are, is that forest over there? Naruto pointed to the forest and the man turned and looked at it with an impassive look on his face. Is where Lobo lives, Lobo? The man asked. I am the Jin Chiriki of the Jubi aka Lobo. I see, the man said. Anyways to answer your question I am the spirit of the sword you hold that you and the Sinigami breathe life into. My name is Zenjetsu, I have tried to call out to you many times but I couldn't reach you until now. Zenjetsu, what a nice name, as you are aware I am Naruto, nice to meet you. Naruto held out his hand and Naruto felt his silver flame grow stronger as the man grabbed it and Naruto laughed out loud at the power he felt. You are very interesting master to work with Naruto. Thank you Zenjetsu. Naruto smiled happily. Outside his mindscape, Naruto's silver energy was skyrocketing like crazy and Hinata was reacting similar only her flame was bright red and CJ raised an eyebrow at the his students' power that they were unleashing. Soon. I might even fear these two if they work together, CJ said smiling. Ah who am I kidding I'm stronger than them right now. Naruto got to his feet first and looked at his blade which glowed silver with power. Hinata got up and her blade was purple at the hilt and had a wooden sheath and CJ smiled again. Oh these two are good Rujin Jaka and, if I'm right, Zenjutsu, both now transformed Shinobi and they looked at each other and then at the swords. You discovered your sword's name, both said to each other, it wasn't a question. Show me your swords, CJ commanded and both nodded understanding what was expected of them, Hinata drew her blade first. Reduce all creation to ashes, Rujin Jaka, Hinata cried and her sword burst into flames and the flames wrapped around her but she was fierce and determined. Cut through the darkness, Zenjutsu. Naruto's swords take the form of two separate, purely black blades. One is the size of Naruto in length, it was in the shape of a kyber knife, with a grip at the base of the blade and a handle extending back from this about roughly the width and length of Naruto's forearm. There is a thin, hollowed out portion running along the back edge of the blade from the base to the middle of the blade. The second blade is relatively small, about the size of Naruto's arm, and is similar to the first blade, but resembles a trench knife more than a sword. Unlike its counterpart, it has an enclosed handle, with a portion acting like a handguard. Both blades represent a different facet of Naruto's mind, the larger blade represents his will to protect and the smaller blade represents the will to destroy all who anger him. Naruto held both blades in his hands and looked at himself his eyes glowed silver with raw power. Whoa that's new, CJ said looking at his new apprentice's appearance. Zenjutsu. Naruto looked at the blades and then swung one blade in an experimental attack and the force blasted an air slice so powerful it ripped apart the landscape. Oh uh, whoops, Naruto said rubbing the back of his head. Whoops? Lobo said whoops. You are IP apart the land with a single swing and all you have to say is whoops. I'm inclined to agree with Lobo Kit, you're gonna have to learn to control that, Kurama said. My turn, Hinata said and she swung her blade and what little Naruto didn't destroy utterly burst into flames. Ah? Hinata said and she weaved hand signs. Sutin, because we show ah. Hinata put out the flames with the wave of water. Oops. Dear Nechan what have I unleashed? CJ thought sweat dropping. We really need to learn how to control this or we're going to destroy pretty much everything, Hinata said. Agreed. Naruto laughed and CJ was annoyed and rubbed his eyes. This is gonna be a long 8 months. CJ thought as he looked at the environment and waved a hand repairing the damage. Time skip 8 months later. Naruto and Hinata were facing each other, Naruto had his swords in his hands and Hinata's was in her hand blazing with fire both were in Naruto's desert dimension which had intense gravity. They were there both for training and to keep environmental destruction to a minimum to help the Sinigami avoid paperwork. Now for your final test, attack each other with everything you've got, I wanna see the fruits of your labor. CJ said and both children nodded and they unleashed their power silver energy rose off Naruto and bright red flames danced around Hinata. Right. Naruto said. Understood. Hinata replied. As one they charged each other blades dancing in a barrage of blows and swipes. To the untrained eye and even the eye of even Anbu they were completely invisible the only sound could be heard steel on steel. After a while Naruto appeared above Hinata his smaller blade blazing with black flames. Enten, Getsuga Tensho. Inferno style. Moonfang Heaven Piercer, Naruto slashed with his blade and the wave of black flames rained down at Hinata whose eyes widened. Bad. Very bad. Hinata unleashed her Reiatsu as well her power infused with her own abilities. Bakudo 90, Sozio no Q. Way of Binding 90, Sphere of Creation, 
a black and white sphere rocketed into creation and wrapped the attack and blocked it then vanished cancelling the attack. However in her haste to cancel the black flames she lost sight of Naruto who appeared right behind her. Getsuga Tensho. Naruto swung the larger blade and Hinata jumped back and blocked the black wave with a wave of fire from Rujin Jaka and a cry of Taimetsu. Torch, Naruto dodged her own attack and gripped both blades and swung them with a cry of Getsuga Jujishu. Moon Fang cross-shaped piercer, Naruto fired of a large cross-shaped black blast of energy that Hinata dodged which reduced everything it touched to nothing but atoms. Hinata held out her hand. Hato 88, here you get Kazoku Shinton Reho. She fired a gigantic blue blast of lightning at Naruto who countered with Getsuga Jujishu again. Such power. Jiraiya thought as he watched his students clash blade on blade they attacked with unending ferocity they are on a whole other level is this the power you had when I was your sensei? Jiraiya asked CJ. Something like that anyway, I always thought Lt. Ichigo had much more power than what he displayed but to think that he was capable of this I never imagined he had such power and only in a Shikai state I'd actually hate to see Bankai. CJ responded his arms crossed his power protecting Jiraiya. Bankai, Naruto cried out. Shvived. CJ said, Bankai, Hinata roared. Tense as Aijetsu. Naruto was clad in a black hiri his silver Aitsu swirling around him. Zanka no Tachi. Hinata's flame had only clad her blade in a single point and Naruto and the others felt their lips crack from the heat. Naruto and Hinata attacked each other blade on blade both pushing each other to the max neither giving an inch a while later both were thrown back. Getsuga Tensho. Naruto swung his blade and a ginormous black wave of power blasted towards Hinata and she swung her blade as well. Zanka no Tachi Tenchi Kaijin. Hinata fired off a huge blast of concentrated heat and fire. Both attacks clashed for some time and eventually both exploded sending both combatants flying and they deactivated their bank eyes and Naruto wraps the hilts of both swords and cloth, then placed the larger blade on his back and the shorter blade on his right hip. Hinata placed the sword back in its sheath and they both laughed at the destruction they caused. They're monsters, CJ said and Jiraiya nodded in agreement. I'm going to regret doing this but Nechan gave me no choice, CJ snapped his fingers and both shinobi looked at their teacher a serious look on their faces. Alright I've taught you all that I can and now I am taking you to a realm where you can balance out your yin and yang energies. You have learned to wield Reiatsu and are masters of it but eventually that power will tear you apart if you don't learn how to counterbalance it, which is why I'm going to take you to a place where you will learn to wield ki and no I don't mean killer intent I mean the inner energy of a physical form. Let's go. Hinata and Naruto said excitedly and Jiraiya face palmed as CJ slashed his scythe and they followed the Shinigami into the realm that they were going to learn from. Kami's lookout. Goku and Vegeta were standing at the lookout and they were looking out at the sky before them and then Ben walked forward his staff in his hand. So why are we here? Vegeta asked. I was told to have you brought here in order to train two new warriors from another universe. Dend responded. Other universe. Hey I remember Lord Beerus mentioning other universes during our fight saying that he was the god of destruction from the seventh universe. Goku said. Correct young scion. CJ's voice said from behind them and Dend. Goku and Vegeta turned around to see him standing there with Naruto and Hinata who looked around taking it all in. You are to teach these two children in the art of key fighting, I'm giving you two years to teach them. And who are you? I can't sense your energy either are you a god? Yes I am the god of death but you can call me CJ. And why should we teach them? Vegeta asked, because I fucking said so. Vegeta just do it besides it could be fun. Goku said, fine but if this goes sideways I'm blaming you Kakarot, Vegeta said. Naruto and Hinata looked at Vegeta and Goku. Naruto was gazing with his Rinnegan and saw that these two were not to be messed with. Vegeta looked at the two and raised an eyebrow at them. What? Nothing, Naruto said looking around. So where are we and when do we begin training? To answer your questions in order you are on the lookout above the earth and, training begins now. Vegeta vanished and kicked Naruto at such speeds Naruto couldn't even track him but felt the impact and he dropped to his knees. You weren't ready. Naruto groaned as he got to his feet and he looked at Hinata who had an equally shocked look on her face. They are stronger than they look Vegeta but have fun humbling them, CJ said then he vanished. Alright you brats time to get to some serious training, it won't be easy by any stretch of the imagination. Vegeta got a sadistic look on his face and Naruto and Hinata gulped at the thought. Time skipped three months later, Naruto and Hinata were in a room where the gravity was up to 200 hundred times normal gravity and they were sweating and Vegeta and Goku looked at them. Come on you two I know you have more in you than this, Goku said. I'll show you. Naruto charged and if one looked very closely at Vegeta you would see a small smile play at his lips but Hinata teamed up with her boyfriend and they both attacked Goku who was easily dodging them but they were giving this training their all. They'll make fine warriors someday. 
Vegeta thought then he charged two and the two scions tore apart the team that was Hinata and Naruto but one on one they weren't bad. One year later, Naruto and Hinata were facing the two scions and they were fresh and Goku looked at Vegeta. Alright today we are going to have you go one on one with a super scion and then two on one where you will both work together against one of us. Goku said and Vegeta stepped back and Goku started unleashing his power and turned into a super scion. I'll go first. Naruto charged in and the two warriors fought clashing back and forth at first Naruto held his own after a while he was defeated as the super scion overwhelmed him. Not bad Naruto you've gotten stronger but my combat experience wins you need to learn how to time your battles in order figure out when to win. Hi Goku sensei. Naruto said and then Hinata fought and like Naruto she too held her own rather well but was overwhelmed by the scion warrior. You two have gotten stronger but there is still much more you must learn. Vegeta said. Understood Vegeta sensei. Both students faced their teachers and they began learning all they could. 8 months and 28 days later, Naruto and Hinata were back on the lookout and they saw their teachers standing next to a man that Naruto could only describe as a fat black Jenny but Naruto knew better this was Mr. Popo who wasn't nearly as strong as his teachers Popo was one of the scariest people Naruto had ever met. Flashback 2 years ago, Naruto and Hinata were on the lookout and Vegeta and Goku were taking a break from training the kids and then Naruto saw Mr. Popo but didn't know who he was. What's with the black Jenny? Naruto asked Mr. Popo turned slowly to Naruto and with every second that passed Naruto's fear grew and suddenly Naruto was looking into the black pits of hell itself. What did you say, maggot? Popo asked. NNN nothing. Naruto said. Well Popo's about to teach you the pecking order. It goes you, the dirt, the worms inside of the dirt, Popo's stool, dead, then Popo. Any questions? Uh yeah I Naruto was kicked off the lookout falling screaming as he fell. Enjoy the climb back up, bitch. Popo laughed. End flashback. Naruto and Hinata had developed a healthy fear of Mr. Popo but it didn't cripple them. You want to do some training in the hyperbolic time chamber? Popo asked. The what? Naruto asked. Popo opened the door and pointed inside. Inside that room time moves 365.24 times that of this dimension. In that pink hair girl terms one year in there one day out here. Thanks to some work from Naruto's seals all four of us can enter there together. Now get ready for some intense training. Goku said happily which only made Naruto and Hinata nervous. Time skip to hyperbolic time chamber years later. Naruto and Hinata walked out they were in 18 year old bodies and Naruto was unparalleled in strength as was Hinata they could fight Gogeta individually but only up to Super Saiyan 2 after that they lost easily. Naruto and Hinata looked out at the world before them and inhaled and exhaled and Hinata looked at Naruto semi longingly at Naruto but the blonde hero was clenching his fists feeling the power flowing through him. Dend and CJ were conversing and then CJ saw Naruto and Hinata and walked over to them. Ready to depart to your home world? CJ asked and Naruto and Hinata nodded and CJ slashed a hole in the world and took the two ninja back to their world. Konoha Gates. Naruto and Hinata walked out and saw Jiraiya standing there and he looked at both of them. Let's get going you two. Jiraiya started walking as Naruto and Hinata followed along. Naruto and Hinata were holding hands as they approached the check-in. Halt, Izumo said and Naruto and Hinata stopped. Naruto Otsutsuki. Hinata Hyuga and Jiraiya of the Sanin returning from a three-year training trip, Jiraiya said showing all three ID cards and Kotetsu let them pass. Naruto and Hinata kept walking and then the Konohamaru squad, as Konohamaru, Hanabi, Moegi and Udon like to call themselves, walked over and saw Naruto and Hinata, Nisan slash Nechan. All four called out and all ran up to them and hugged each of them. Naruto rubbed the heads of their students slash younger siblings. How's it going, Naruto said laughing. Not bad Nisan. Hanabi said, Nisan watch this, Konohamaru said then he slammed his palms together. Oiroke, Onanoko Doshi no Jutsu. Sexy, girl on girl Jutsu, Konohamaru turned into two naked females cuddling each other. Jirai flew back with a nosebleed at the Jutsu but Naruto laughed and shook his head. Konohamaru you shouldn't use the Jutsu anymore I never used it after the Genin selection exams as it was a form of mask that I used, Naruto said and Konohamaru looked a little depressed. Though I'm not one to not give credit where credit is due so nice work. Naruto smiled. Well you and I will catch up later over a bowl of ramen but for now I have to go off to Tosan's office and sign up for the Jounin exams in a few days from now, today's the deadline. Naruto grabbed Hinata's hand and Hiraishine to the Hokage's office and saw his dad meeting with several Jounin. Hey Tosan. Naruto smiled and Minato shook his head. Naruto how many times have I told you not to use my jutsu to warp to the office just because you don't feel like walking? Minato asked and Naruto put his hand on his chin thinking. About 400 times. And why don't you listen? Because I don't feel like it. Naruto got a serious look on his face. Anyway Hokage-sama I, Naruto Otsutsuki, 
would like to sign up for the Jounin exams. I, Hinata Hyuga, would also like to sign up for the Jounin exams. Hinata said, Very well then I, Minato Namikaze Yondarme Hokage, accept your application. Meet at the Chunin exam finals arena in three days time for your test, Minato said then Naruto grabbed Hinata's hand again and vanished again and they appeared in a clearing with a beautiful waterfall and gorgeous landscape. Naruto gulped silently at the thought that he was about to attempt. Naruto had Hinata sit down on the picnic blanket that he had spread out and she did so. Hinata-chan I wanted to sing a song for you that I heard during our training which I feel fits. Naruto got up and pulled out a guitar that he picked up on one of their off days from training. Naruto started playing a small melody. A.N. I don't own the song Hey Juliet by ALMNT at all. Hey Juliet. Hey Juliet. Hey I've been watching you. Every little thing you do. Every time I see you pass. In my homeroom class. Makes my heart beat fast. I've tried to page you twice. But I see you roll your eyes. Wish I could make it real. But your lips are sealed. That ain't no big deal. Cause I know you really want me. Yeah. I hear your friends talk about me. Yeah. So why you trying to do without me? Yeah, when you got me, where you want me. Hey Juliet, I think you're fine. You really blow my mind. Maybe someday, someday, you and me can run away. I just want you to know, I wanna be your Romeo. Hey Juliet, hey Juliet, hey Juliet. Girl you got me on my knees. Begging please, baby please. Got my best DJ on the radio waves saying, Hey Juliet, why do you do him this way? Too far to turn around, turn around. So I'm gonna stand my ground, stand my ground. Give me just a little bit of hope. With a smile or a glance. Give me one more chance. Cause I know you really want me. Yeah. I hear your friends talk about me. Yeah. So why you trying to do without me? Yeah. When you got me. Where you want me. Hey Juliet. I think you're fine. You really blow my mind. Maybe. Maybe. Someday. Someday. You and me can run away. I just want you to know. I wanna be your Romeo. Hey Juliet. Hey. Hey Juliet, hey Juliet, I know you really want me. I hear your friends talk about me. So why you trying to do without me? When you got me, where you want me? You don't have to say forever, for us to hang together. So here, here, me, me, when, when, I, I, say, say, hey, hey, hey Juliet, hey Juliet, hey Juliet, I think, I think, you're fine, you're fine. You really blow my mind, blow my mind. Maybe, maybe, someday, someday. You and me can run away, run away. I just want you to know, I wanna be your Romeo. Hey Juliet, hey, hey, Juliet, hey Juliet, hey Juliet. I think, I think, you're fine, you're fine. You really blow my mind, blow my mind. Maybe, maybe, someday, someday, you and me can run away, run away. I just want you to know, I wanna be your Romeo. Hey Juliet, hey, hey, Juliet, hey, hey. Juliet. Naruto finished playing the song and Hinata was in tears as she listened to the song and she was so moved, she held her hand to her heart. That was beautiful, Naruto-kun. It's not over yet. Naruto put the guitar away and pulled out a small box. Hinata Hyuga, you and I have known each other since we were kids. We trained together, grew up together, and eventually fell for each other. You are the part of me that I was missing all those years ago and what I really know is. Naruto gulped again. Will you marry me? Naruto opened up the box and revealed a golden ring. The circle of gold was topped in the shape of a fox head with diamonds making the whiskers and eyes. Hinata threw her arms around Naruto kissing him a thousand times and only stopped to breath her answer. Yes, yes, a thousand times, yes, of course I'll marry you Naruto-kun. Naruto slid the ring on Hinata's finger and kissed her again. Naruto swept Hinata off her feet and then Hiroshined back to the compound they called home. Warning, Lemon Alert. If you don't want to read this go ahead and skip there will be another point where you can pick up again. Naruto walked into the room they would now share Hinata in his arms bridal style and laid her down on the bed. With a single hand sign Naruto activated the silencing seals that he had installed. Naruto kissed Hinata again and with one swift movement stripped Hinata of her clothing until she was only in a bra and panties. Naruto unhooked the bra with a single hand letting Hinata's DD cup breasts full and exposed for Naruto. He started by kneading one of them with one hand and started kissing the nipple with his mouth. His actions caused Hinata to start moaning with pleasure and eventually Naruto started trailing down towards her pussy and he stripped her panties her wet, pulsing core dripping with her arousal. You're so wet Heim. S shut up. Naruto gave an experimental lick and Hinata moaned again. Naruto took this as a sign and Hinata started moaning even louder as he continued his attack on her womanhood and Hinata pushed his head closer in order to let him reach deeper parts of her insides. Naruto continued his actions and Hinata moaned even louder and her breath started to become heavy. 
and Naruto kun am close. Naruto didn't respond but kept his actions going and eventually Hinata cried out as she came all over Naruto's face. Naruto licked his lips savoring the taste of his fiancée and he smiled at her. You taste delicious Hinata Haim. Naruto smiled but then Hinata pushed him off her and onto his back. My turn to taste you, Hinata said and, with just as much easy as he had, Hinata stripped Naruto out of his clothing until he was in only his boxers. Hinata saw her prize standing hard and proud before her and slowly and deliberately removed his boxers. Hinata smiled and licked her lips as she saw Naruto's erect member. When I said he was well in doubt I had no idea of his true size. Hinata thought as she began to massage the shaft and Naruto moaned at her touch and she continued her actions causing Naruto to moan louder. Then she took his member in her mouth and started massaging the head with her tongue swirling and bobbing her head and Naruto threw his head back at her actions. Hinata continued her menstruations and Naruto's moans grew in volume as he grew closer and closer. Hinata felt herself comb again as she pictured the huge organ inside her and at the thought of the pounding Naruto would give her. H Hinata I'm gonna. Naruto let loose a roar as he ejected his seat into Hinata's mouth and she did her best to swallow the load and she unclasped her lips from Naruto's cock with a loud pop Naruto looked at Hinata and she purred at Naruto who smiled at her I have to say Naruto-kun I always fantasized about drinking your essence but that was better than I imagined Hinata pounced on Naruto and kissed him and they swirled tongues as they heated up the contact between them Naruto kept his lips locked on Hinata's as he pushed her down and only separated to take a deep breath. Hinata Haim are you sure you want to go through with this? You know what could happen. Don't worry about that Naruto-kun I know that you will keep me safe, but please be gentle with that monster between your legs you might hurt me if you aren't careful, Hinata said sensually Naruto nodded and he weaved a few hand signs. Saiki Hogo no Jutsu. Sexual Protection Jutsu. Naruto cast the jutsu that Jiraiya had taught him that helped prevent pregnancy and the transference of sexual diseases, not that Naruto thought that either of them had any but as much as he loved Hinata he wasn't ready to become a father yet. Naruto kissed Hinata again and aligned himself with Hinata's entrance and locked eyes with her and Hinata nodded and then Naruto entered his fiancée and she started to cry with pain as Naruto broke her hymen. Naruto kissed Hinata and he stayed motionless until Hinata stopped crying. I'm okay. I'm gonna take it slow and controlled unless you want me to go faster. A all right. Hinata said and just as Naruto promised he took it slow at first and Hinata's cheeks started turning red with arousal and she started moaning. F faster, Hinata commanded and Naruto obliged and started thrusting faster and faster into Hinata who was moaning even louder. Naruto felt the tightness of Hinata as he continued plunging into her, the sensations that he was feeling was better than anything he ever imagined. Harder. Hinata screamed in ecstasy and Naruto complied and eventually he was thrusting hard and fast into Hinata who was moaning and so was Naruto as his breaths became harsher and more labored. Hinata felt herself tightening around Naruto as she grew close to an orgasm. H Hinata I'm close. Me too Naruto. Me too. Naruto kept up the pace and then he couldn't hold back and he screamed Hinata's name as he came and she screamed Naruto's name as she came. Naruto-kun slash Hinata-chan. Naruto and Hinata felt the sweat on their skin but neither one felt any form of exhaustion. Even after that you're still just as hard, wanna go again? You bet. Naruto and Hinata shuffled around a bit until Naruto was lying on his back and Hinata was on top of him and she began riding him and Naruto was moaning again and so was Hinata. Naruto sat up and started sucking on Hinata's nipple and she moaned even louder at his actions Naruto was pounding her even harder than before and Hinata was screaming with pleasure as she felt the sensation of completeness that Naruto gave her. Naruto continued to make love to his fiancée and he's so happy about the sense of completeness that he felt. And Laman, downstairs, Lobo, in his human form, which was a man with grey hair and an armor set that has wolf heads on the shoulder guards and a long black cape with a wolf head on the hilt of his sword which was on his back he was taking a drink of sake and looking at Kurama who was also drinking. So how long have they been up there? Lobo asked. Couple of hours maybe I don't know. Kurama responded then Minato and Kushina walked and I saw the two Hanyo Bija sitting at the table. Um what is going on here? Minato asked. Your son and soon to be daughter-in-law are getting it on in their bedroom, Lobo said. Yeah they should be busy for a while, Kurama said taking another sip of sake. Ha, Kushina said holding out her hand to Minato who groaned and handed her a wad of cash. You two had a bet on when they would get together? Lobo asked. To be more specific we had a bet on when Naruto would propose to Hinata, Minato said. I thought it would be after the Jounin exams Kushina thought that he would propose when they got back from the training trip. Never bet against a Nuzumaki, they have the devil's luck. Kurama said. Um who are you two anywho? Kushina asked looking at the human shaped bijou. Ah, where are my manners? Lobo said as he stood up. I am the Ame no Hitotsu no Kami, Dadara, Diodara Bachi, Jubi no Okami, but you can just call me Lobo. 
Lobobo to Kushina, you know me Kushina I was the annoying fuzzball that lives in my head and that won't stop yelling at me to use your eloquent description of me, Kurama said not bothering to get up or even look at his former host, you're the QB? Kushina shouted, yes I am and I would take this moment to complain about my seal, chained to a rock with spikes in my hands feet and tails as well as stomach WHO gave you that bright idea? I may be a being of chakra but I can still feel pain, somebody's pissed. Minato muttered to his wife as Kurama continued his rant about the pain he felt. Well in my defense all you did was yell at me and never even tried to ask me about my day, Kushina shouted back, because your first words to me were and I quote neither of us have any sort of luck do we? You keep the world at bay but I keep you at bay how was I supposed to respond to that? What about Mito? Don't get me started on that woman. The only thing she said to me was if you use your power, only hatred will come from it. Stay tranquil deep inside me if I had to chose between you and her I'd have picked you. And that's not a compliment, Kurama yelled back at his former Jean Shiriki, Minato and Lobo looked at the two argue like one would watch a tennis match. Fine you don't have liked me but can I ATL East say I'm sorry? Well I think that. Wait did you just apologize? Kurama said genuinely confused. Yes I did I'm sorry for how I treated you. Kushina said. Well I accept your apology. Kurama said. With Sakura. Sakura was sitting in her room a bunch of pictures of Hinata with kunai in them in red paint that read Akuma Slut and Huda Bimbo and other rude slogan. Three years, three years since you killed my true love you, damn bitch. Sakura muttered to herself. With the strength that Tsunade-sama has given me I'll avenge Sasuke-kun. Sakura laughed evilly and threw another kunai into the picture and laughed again. Time skipped 10 hours later. Naruto was in his boxers a very well satisfied Hinata in her bra and panties and both were sitting in bed cuddling with each other. I was sure that we had stamina but it's like what 3 in the afternoon? Hinata asked. Something like that. Naruto responded laughing. Wanna go out and say hi to our old classmates? Sounds good. Hinata got up and then she wobbled and almost fell over but Naruto caught her before she fell. Little weak at the knees Hinata Haim, shut up. Hinata growled but after a while Kurama's chakra healed her dizziness and she got up and put her outfit on and then they both walked outside. A few minutes later they saw Choji and Ino talking with each other. Choji. Ino. Naruto called out and both Chunin turned to see Naruto and Hinata walking towards them. Naruto. Hinata. Ino called out happily and Choji smiled. You're back. Hinata and Naruto smiled. Yep, we've gotten stronger, Hinata said laughing. Really? Ino said then she looked at Naruto and saw the sword on his back. What's with the sword on your back and what happened to the sword that was on your waist? Oh this? Naruto unsheathed Zenjetsu from his back. This is my awakened sword, Zenjetsu. Zenjetsu? Why does it have an emptied out section in the blade? I dunno. Naruto shrugged, then he saw three lions charging at him from behind Ino and Choji. Naruto swung his blade and called out. Get Sugatencho. The black wave of Reiatsu and destroyed the lions. Naruto what the hell? Ino shouted Naruto got a hardened look on his face and looked towards where he sensed a foreign chakra signature. It's kinda scary but he looks sexy when he's angry. Hinata thought and then Naruto vanished in a shunpo, flash step, and reappeared his sword inches from slicing his attack in half. My, my such a large sword are you perhaps compensating for something? The boy asked. Holy crap if it weren't for my reflexes I'd be sliced in half. Get Suga. Naruto started draw his shorter blade, then swung it with his follow up. Tencho. The wave of blue light blasted the boy and he was thrown back with blood covering his chest. Naruto shun put over to his foe and held the smaller blade of Zenjutsu to his throat. What's going on here? Naruto held the sword closer. Answer and maybe I'll have Hinata Haim heal you. Well looks like I don't have to watch out to keep you from dying. Guess I'm not getting what I want. Naruto locked eyes with the boy. Tsukuyomi. The boy's eyes glazed over. I was sent here by Danzo Sama and the Yondai mate to be your new teammate. My name is Sai. So what does Danzo want with us? My mission is to watch the QB Jin Chiriki and if possible. What's wrong answer? Naruto commanded him with Tsukuyomi. The seal on my tongue prevents me from answering. Fine. Naruto growled and activated his Rinnegan. Jigakudo. The king of hell rose up and Naruto tossed Sai in and healed him. You are lucky I have more important things to do or I'd have sent to interrogation. Chapter 17. Unleashed Power. Time skip three days later. Naruto, Hinata and the other John and Hopeful stood in the arena and Minato looked at all of them. Alright, the eight of you have submitted your applications to become John and, you will be tested in all aspects of shinobi life and after that you will be given a score and if you pass you will be promoted to John and but you will have to pass a second hidden test, Minato said. First Taijutsu your tester will be my guy. Guy walked in was about start shouting about the flames of youth but one look from Kushina stopped him. I am my guy and I will test you in Taijutsu, 
Guy said and then everyone but a random Chunin stood against Guy and then they both started fighting. After a few minutes time was called and Minato looked at Guy for his score. Your flames of youth are strong but need stooking I give you 65 points out of 100. Then the others in the test stepped forward and one by one they fought Guy who awarded them points. Next Hinata hewed Guy. Hinata walked forward and Naruto felt her suppressing the spiritual sense of her power and he smiled. This is going to be good. Naruto smiled and Guy got the signal to start and he dashed forward and punched Hinata who stopped it with one finger the whole crowd, minus Naruto, was stunned silent. Come on Guy that the best you got? I want a challenge, Hinata said and then the two shinobi started trading blows and after a while they separated and Guy was laughing as was Hinata. Such power your flames of youth are brighter than any I've seen. Come on give me your best. Then I will comply. Guy crossed his arms. Hachimon Tonkan Dai Roku Kimon, Kai. Guy turned red in the skin and then he charged in and both fighters attacked each other and were striking their foe with the power they possessed. After a while Guy started throwing a punch of punches. Asaka Jaku, morning peacock, he not effortlessly dodged all the punches of the technique and then punched her foe sending him blasting backward. You done? He not a said in a very Vegeta-like tone. Damn Vegeta sensei corrupted her too. Naruto slumped as he remembered how he got in battle. Um yeah. Hinata Hyuga gets 100 out of 100 for her test in Taijutsu, Guy said. Naruto started cracking his neck and walked into the arena and faced Guy who was nervous at fighting another wielder of that kind of power. I'm ready Guy Sensei. Alright. Guy charged in at blinding speeds and appeared behind Naruto and threw a punch which Naruto grabbed without looking then he threw Guy who slid on the ground and when he regained his center Naruto was right in front of him and flicked him in the face. Guy was sent flying again and then threw punch after punch which Naruto blocked or dodged then Guy threw a vicious punch which threw smoke into the air and Naruto appeared behind Guy and prepared to do a neck chop and Guy braced himself but all Naruto did was tap and Guy was knocked out cold. I win. Naruto said laughing. Well that's 150 out of 100 for knocking out the examiner, Minato said and Naruto smiled Hinata looked at Naruto with a frustrated look. Really you just had to one up me didn't you? Hinata groaned and Naruto smiled at her. Yes yes I did. Naruto laughed again. Next, Minato said trying not to laugh at the interaction between Naruto and Hinata. Genjutsu, you will have to break through 30 and cast a genjutsu that will be graded on its realism and ability to be broken. Your teacher will be named Kuranai Yuhi. Kuranai walked forward and everyone tested each person then Hinata went forward and broke everyone placed on her then she placed one on Kuranai which was something that reversed her sense of direction and Kuranai was eventually able to break it and Naruto was able to break every single one and then he used Amina Minaka and transported everyone to the glacier dimension and then transported them back after Kuranai couldn't break it. Next Ninjutsu. Kakashi was the teacher each person did well but then Hinata showed up and she smiled she quickly entered sage mode and formed the mirrored ram hand sign. Senpo Sutan, Kokoriyuka. Sage art water release, flowing river of petrification, Hinata spat out a huge flowing river and Kakashi's Sharingan saw the river was bright blue with chakra. Senjutsu. Kakashi thought shocked. Based on what Jiraiya Sama said those who can't control nature energy will turn to stone with the overwhelming power of nature itself. Kakashi saw no form of escape from this attack. No choice time to use the gift Obito gave to me. Kakashi's Sharingan shifted into its Mangekyo form and channeled a huge amount of chakra into his eye. Kamui, a large dimensional hole opened and the water attack disappeared into that pocket dimension. Hinata however wasn't done and the water from all around her started to bend to her will and weapons of water formed and attacked as Hinata's hands danced and Naruto smiled as he watched. Ah I see, Hinata's Mizumegami, water goddess, jutsu. So she mastered it, Naruto said as he watched. What a terrifying jutsu maybe with my Anton could I hope to counter it. Naruto smiled Hinata continued to attack and Kakashi tried to counter with Doden but Hinata's water started sparking and Kakashi jumped back as the water bullets ripped right through the wall of earth. Ranton, Ryu. Gale style, thunderstorm. Naruto watched as Hinata devastated Kakashi and in jutsu Kakashi lost and was knocked out from chakra exhaustion. 150 out of 100 free Hinata Hyudga. Minato said, well now that the examiner has been knocked out I guess I have to step in, Jiraiya said as he and Naruto faced each other. Senjutsu or ninjutsu? Naruto asked. Senjutsu is out of the question you would destroy everything so only ninjutsu. Fair enough. Naruto cracked his neck and inhaled. Katan, Gokamekiyaku. Naruto exhaled a wave of fire and Jiraiya weaved his own sign. Doten, Chidokaku. A wall of earth surrounded Jiraiya and the wave of heat burned the outer layer of earth had melted into lava from the heat of the Katan attack. Naruto jumped into the air and weaved more signs and looked down at Jiraiya. Katan, Gokamishitusu. Fire style, 
great fire destruction, Naruto exhaled the wave of fire and Jiraiya shielded himself with the stomach of the mountain toad. Gaki you aren't at my level yet. Jiraiya emerged laughing. Is that right? Naruto raised his eye and he slammed his hands. Makuten, Jukai Kauten. The wooden forest sprung to life and, and Jiraiya jumped around trying to avoid capture and then it managed to capture Jiraiya. Not bad Naruto, but not good enough. Jiraiya vanished in poof of smoke three Jiraiyas surrounded Naruto. Shira Tensei. Naruto held out his hand and all three Jiraiyas were blasted away from Naruto. Nice try. Naruto unleashed a beating of ninjutsu on Jiraiya and laughed at the look at the Sanin. Well, Minato said. That's 155 out of 100 for Naruto. After a while the gathered examiners looked at Naruto, Hinata and a third tuning into the next room and there stood Kushina who had her blade in her hand. Now for the final part of the Jounin exams, Kushina said. You have two minutes to figure this riddle out, ready when you are. All three responded at all. What makes a shinobi worse than scum? When he abandons the mission for his comrades as taught to us by Sakumo Hatake, the Shiro Kiba. The tuning next to them said, Kushina was completely stone face. Head through the door on the left and a scroll will be there. Read it and it will tell you the results of the exam. Kushina looked at Naruto and in Hinata. The same question, answer it. In the shinobi world those who break the rules are scum, Hinata started. But those who betray their comrades are even worse than scum. Go through the door on the right read the scroll and it will tell you how you did in this exam. Kushina motioned to the door behind her on the right. Then she looked at Naruto and her face betrayed nothing. You and I both know what I'm going to say so can I just go through the door on the right? Sorry no exceptions. Fine, when he forfeits the lives of his comrades for missions and ignores those precious to him. Door on the right, Kushina said pointing at it and Naruto walked after his fiancée and he saw a scroll and he opened it and it said two words you pass. Figures, Naruto said and then he grabbed the vest that was next to the scroll and walked out and saw Hinata donning the jounin jacket. Looks good on you Hinata Haim. Hinata turned around and saw Naruto putting on the jacket as well and they kissed again then walked out the door and Minato and the other Jounin cheered as Naruto and Hinata walked out with the jackets on and they looked at each other with pride and then they walked home to prepare for the next day. Kaze no Kuni 5 hours later, two cloaked figures were walking across the vast expanse of the desert one was blonde and tall the other was hunched over. Both were wearing the black cloaks with red clouds. Are you sure you have enough clay with you, after all our target is the host of the Aichibi, Shukaku. The hunched man said in a gruff voice to his partner. Don't worry Sasori my man I've got more than enough my art will win out. Hmm. The second blonde said. Your art is nothing more than childish fireworks. Sasori growls back irritated. True art is a think of eternal beauty that will last forever. The two argued back and forth and after a while a sand and arrived and looked at them both then the man bowed. Sasori sama. The man said. That's quite the jutsu you invented Sasori to think you had this up your sleeve the whole time. Datara said, are we ready to go and capture the Aichibi? Sasori asked his partner. Yeah, hmm, I'll stay here, don't take long you know how I hate being kept waiting. Datara made a clay bird and took to the sky and started bombing the lookouts. Then he landed on a platform and there stood Garo a sneer on his face. Well, well well and here I though the Akatsuki has gone into hiding, Gara said emotionlessly. So you found me, Datara said. That bird you were riding doesn't live in the desert. I see. Gara made two hand signs. Futon, Datapa. Gara exhales a huge blast of wind that blasts Datara off his bird but it swoops down to catch him then Gara raises his hands and the sand from the entire village raises up and starts forming a huge cloud of sand. Great he's got the type advantage here well shit. Gara then commands the sand to grab Datara which it does then it encases him in sand but just as Gara is about to finish him off Datara makes a hand sign and the clay bird he was riding explodes and Datara started free falling and he creates another bird and the sand chases him and for a while he managed to avoid it but eventually Gara's sand captures Datara arm Sabaku Soso Sand burial Datara arm gets crushed but more sand rockets after him to finish him off but Datara continues to dodge as me modes a gigantic clay sculpture Well I'll just have to destroy his whole village then Datara starts flying up as he continues to molding a gigantic bird-like creature with its wings folded then when he finished he looked at the hole in Gar's sphere then the shifting sand rockets after him. According to our information he only carries a fixed amount sand in that gourd. So that sand must already be infused with a large amount of chakra, in other words special sand. He normally uses that sand for defense but he can instantly change for attacking. What did they call it? Just then a clump of sand rockets up and Datara dodges the fast-moving sand. Oh now I remember they called it his ultimate defense. Datara plunges his hand into his pocket and to his dismay he felt only a small amount of clay. I only have a small amount of clay left. I seriously underestimated him just like Master Sasori said, 
I only have enough for one more pursuit in my specialty. Daedara holds the bird in his hand then he gives Gara a dark look. Guess I'm blowing up the whole village. Then Daedara notices a bunch of shinobi leaping from below. Outside interference is going to kill all the fun. Besides I'm sick of looking at that impassive look on your face. Daedara throws the clay explosive then he makes a hand sign and it expands into a gigantic explosive. Gara looks at the thing with shock on his face then it starts falling towards the village. I make exploding dolls by eating clay with my hands and combining it with my chakra. My specialty contains my highest level of chakra, C3. Its explosive power is my highest level of art. Daedara makes a hand sign and the doll explodes in a huge blast that encompasses a large chunk of the village. However when the cloud of smoke clears Daedara sees a huge wall of hardened sand that protected the village from the explosion. When he looked up at Gara, he sees he is breathing heavily and sweating like crazy. Okay you within, hmm. Just then a small explosive bird appears right next to Gara. Katsu. Then the bird explodes but when the dust settles the ball of sand is completely closed off and it reveals that Gara is completely uninjured. Just then Daedara smiles darkly. Nicely blocked, however, that's just what I want. Gara looks up and sees small clay ants tunneling onto his section. Not good. Gara thought, art is, shit, an explosion, no. The inside of the ball explodes then it starts leaking sand and Daedara smiles and the shell cracks and starts falling apart. If I set off an explosion in close range, you'd use that gourd sand you used to crush my arm so quickly to guard yourself. That was also my last bomb in order to get close enough, I had to create an opening. That's why I dropped my specialty on the village. The sand dissolves around Gara and he's revealed. Guess I should fetch him. Hmm. Then Daedara gets in closer and Gara stirs and makes a single hand sign to move the huge cloud of sand away from the village. As expected of the Kaze Kage. Just then a barrage of arrows went flying at Daedara and he avoided them all then when Gara moves the sand out of the village he collapses into unconsciousness. Then he starts falling and Konkuro runs toward the falling Gara but Daedara catches him and Madara and starts flying out of the village. Mission accomplished. Baki instantly ran towards the Kaze Kage office and wrote a letter to Konoha asking for assistance. Konkuro ran after the fleeing Daedara. Konkuro don't be so rash. We'll send a retrieval squad. A random Jounin says as he and another Jounin ran after them. With Sasori. Sasori was swinging Hiruko's tail irritatedly just then Daedara landed in front of him. You're late I thought I told you not to keep me waiting. Sasori said anger clear in his voice. He was stronger than I thought. This is why I told you to be prepared but you didn't listen to me. Hey don't blame me. Daedara retorted. Konoha 10 hours later. Naruto woke up and saw Hinata lying next to him snuggling against his arm and so he had to use Kamui to get out of the hold but of course Hinata woke up. Naruto-kun where are you going? Hinata asked rubbing the sleep out of her eyes. I'm gonna shower then see if I can apply to be a Jounin sensei. Naruto replied. Wait for me I wanna go too. He not a pouted childishly Naruto laughed and kissed her and then they both started walking towards the Hokage's office. Akatsuki hideout. Daedara and Sasori arrived at the hideout in Kawanokuni with Gar and the clay bird and when they arrived Daedara opened the door with the half ram sign and the door opened. They walked in and they were greeted by a holographic figure with the Rinnegan. You're late. The figure said. The Jinchuriki was stronger than we anticipated. Daedara responded then the bird placed Gar down on the ground and vanished. Assemble. Then six holographic figures appeared on the ground. I have a question. Daedara asked. What? How are we going to seal the Bijou without the Ghetto Mazo? With the help of Kabuto and my Rinnegan we are able to recreate the Ghetto Mazo. Then Pain slammed his palm on his ground and the Ghetto Mazo appeared. Oh shit. White and Black Zetsu thought then he reached out to Naruto. What is it Zetsu I'm busy? Naruto asked. Obito and Pain have been able to recreate the Ghetto Mazo and we also have captured Gara. What? Naruto roared. Yes we have in Kawa no Kuni. How long will it take to extract Shukaku? It will take three days and nights to seal the Aichibi. Three days couldn't it take longer now that Orochimaru isn't with us? Daedara asked. If that's how you really feel then we should get started right away. The figure responds. About three days and nights, give or take. Zetsu responded to his master. Yeah, Itachi said. Guess it can't be helped, Daedara said. Let's get this show on the road. Then all nine members jumped onto the fingers of the new statute then the fingers started glowing. Fuin Jutsu, Jean Ryukyu Fujin. Sealing Jutsu, nine phantom dragons, Pain said and then nine dragons launched themselves at Gara, and then the ground exploded in a cloud of dust. Naruto. Naruto and Hinata were in the Hokage's office. Hokage-sama, Naruto said to his father. I have received information that Gara has been kidnapped by the Akatsuki. The Kaze Kage, kidnapped, Minato said shocked. Gara made Kaze Kage before I made Hokage, no fair. 
Naruto slumped. Well you've been gone for three years so he's had time, Hinata said comforting her fiancé. Well, then I'll send you on an s rank mission but as you were both recently promoted a seasoned Jown and will have to accompany you, who do you pick? Minato said, Kakashi. Both Naruto and Hinata said simultaneously. Well you will have to have a licensed medic on your mission. Um I am a medic, Hinata said, but are you licensed? Hinata's face turned red with rage and she she started screaming in rage and started swearing so loud that kids from the academy had a long list of new words that their parents had to teach them never to say again, in all my days. All that training and I forgot to get licensed. Hinata slammed her head against the wall. All right who do who we have currently as a licensed medic? Sakura Haruno. Anyone else? No. Fuck. Naruto cursed. Can we see her file? Minato placed his hand on his desk and a file appeared in his hand and he handed it to Naruto and he looked through the file and then closed it and looked at his father. Due to her psychological file I am requesting a member of the Anbu Black Ops as backup to remain hidden in the event that Sakura Haruno turns on us. Well I only have one agent available at the time. Tenzo. An Anbu arrived with Tiger Mask arrived and he looked at Minato. You called Hokage-sama? Danzo asked. Yes you are to back team Kakashi on a mission into the Kaze no Kuni. You are to stay in the background and only provide backup if Sakura Haruno shows signs of betrayal. Understood Hokage-sama. Tenzo vanished and after a few minutes Kakashi and Sakura arrived and Sakura looked at Naruto and Hinata sneer forming on her face but other than that nothing else is done. Alright, Minato said. The four of you will be heading to Kaze no Kuni to rescue the Kaze Kage who has been kidnapped by the Akatsuki you will learn what happened and then hunt down the members of the Akatsuki and kill them, by your command, Hokage-sama. All four said, excellent and S-rank Mishina can kill the demon whore and that Akuma for killing Sasuke-kun and make it look like the Akatsuki killed them. Sakura smiled sickly as she thought this. You are to depart immediately, Minato said and they all left and headed out the gate departing for Kaze no Kuni. About a day and a half of travel they came across to Mari and they brought her up to speed and she ran with them back to Suna. Konoha. Minato was reading a report that a white Zetsu had given him on the movements of the Akatsuki. Then there was a knock on the door and Shizun poked her head in. Hokage-sama, the team that you requested has arrived, Shizun said. Send them in, Minato said and then team guy walked in. You called for us Hokage-sama? Guy asked. Yes the four of you will be backing up team Kakashi in an S-rank mission. By your command Hokage-sama, Neji said then. Guy and his team leave and when they arrive at the front gate guy looks at his team. Alright team we're going to use our springtime of youth dash to get to Suna in one day. I say we can get there in half a day. Lee responds, it will take three days no matter how much you push yourself. Neji says shaking his head, Neji-kun is right. Ten-ten says. Besides you'll just end up tiring yourselves out. Forget it Ten-ten-chan in the end they won't listen to a word that we say. I guess you're right. With Naruto and the others. Naruto, Kakashi, Tamari, Hinata and Sakura were running down the street as a sand jown and briefed them on what has happened. What? Tamari said shocked. Yes Konkuro went after Kaze Kage-sama but was greatly injured and is now in critical condition there is nothing that anyone can do for him. I'm a medic nin so healing people is my speciality, Sakura said. When they arrive at hospital Sakura and Tamari run in but then Shio looks at Kakashi and with shock and recognition which quickly turns to anger and fury and she charged Kakashi. The Shirokiba. Chio cries out in rage and then she charged Kakashi but Naruto caught her fists then unleashed his Rayatsu glaring at Chio. Threaten my teacher and I will not let you live to regret it. Get it? Why yeah, good. Naruto stopped channeling Rayatsu and he looked at Konkuro and looked at Hinata but Sakura stepped forward and started to assess the wounds on Konkuro. He's been poisoned correct? Sakura asked. Yes. Asuna Shinobi said and Sakura got to work healing Konkuro and extracting the poison. Hinata scoffed and turned on her heel and everyone looked at where Hinata stood shocked. What's wrong with her? Chio asked. Hinata Haim is just upset that she couldn't do this herself because she'd be done by now, Naruto said. She is also wary of our new ally, Sakura is about as loyal as a mercenary whose employers forgot to pay her, Naruto said then he turned around and looked at those gathered. A day later, Naruto was pacing as he was annoyed that this was taking so long. Damn it we've already lost a day and a half and Kawa no Kuni is at least a day's journey away and apparently Sakura isn't as competent as she thinks, it took her more time to concoct an antidote to that poison. Hinata could have done it in less than an hour. Naruto finally done and he heard Konkuro talking to them and Naruto got what he needed and then half an hour later they were off with Chio accompanying them. They ran off Naruto was determined to reach Gar on time. With the Akatsuki. During the ceiling everyone was quiet but eventually Zetsu spoke up. There are enemies nearing the base. Enemies? Datara asks. Yes and they are very powerful one of them is called Might Guy. Who is that? 
Payne asks, he's a Konoha Jounin who uses Taijutsu, do not underestimate him. Itachi spoke, the wild beast again eh? Then we'll use that technique. Let me go. I've had a hell of a time finding my Jin Shuriki and it's starting to piss me off. Hiran says, actually I'll go, this is the chance I need to prove myself. Kabuto spoke, very well but we require 30% of your chakra here for the jutsu. Pain spoke, very well, with Neji, Guy, Pakun, Lee and Neji, Team Guy and Pakun were running in the desert when Pakun starts sniffing. What's wrong? Guy asks, someone is approaching. Pakun responds, Byakugan. Neji calls out activating his dojutsu and after a few minutes of searching Neji sees him. Behind us. Neji calls out and the team stops and looks behind them and a gigantic white snake emerged. Well well well, Kabuto said as he emerged from the snake. This chakra, Neji said. Orochimaru, I'm flattered but I'm not Orochimaru-sama, I'm sort of hurt that you don't recognize me Neji after all we took the Chunin exams together. Kabuto, correct. With the Akatsuki, more. Zetsu says, it's getting rather noisy, Datara. Pain scolds, well this one was stronger than the other two. Datara says trying to curb Pain's anger, I told you that your techniques were no good for stealth missions. Sasori says, as I recall your traps were very loud and revealing master. Why you, quiet both you I won't have in fighting in the Akatsuki just focus on the jutsu. Pain shouts. Who else is going? Can I go this time? Hidan asks, it's more Konoha Shinobi. Zetsu says, then it's decided. Pain looks at Itachi, with Kakashi. Kakashi and the others landed in a clearing and Naruto and Kakashi's eyes widened. Stop. Kakashi and Naruto both shouted and everyone came to a standstill as they saw Itachi standing there. Itachi, Uchiha. Naruto smiled reaching for his blade. It's been a long time, Naruto-kun, Kakashi-san. Yeah three years. Naruto responds, so this is the brat who eliminated his clan. Chiyo says, yeah and he's dangerous don't look into his eyes or you're done for. Kakashi says, it's been a while since I've fought the Sharingan but it's nothing too special there are ways to fight a dojutsu. Yeah that would work under normal circumstances, however Itachi has the manga Kyo Sharingan this level can only be combated by two people on this earth, the first is myself the second is Hinata Haim. Naruto is right if you're trapped in Itachi's what is seconds in this world is days or hours for the one in the illusion. Dispelling it is impossible I was trapped in that world for three days and lost consciousness for a week. Kakashi says, so Itachi. I want to see, how much you have grown. Naruto takes Zenjetsu off his back holding the blade in his right hand and took the smaller blade in his left arm. My what is that blade? You'll see. Naruto vanished and appeared behind Itachi who blocked the attack with the ribcage of his Susano. My eyes have gained power since we last met Naruto the eye and no Mangekyo is stronger than anything I've ever held. Then I'll figure out how to take you down. Itachi and Naruto clashed again and then Naruto crossed his blades. Getsuga Jujishu. Itachi's eyes widened in horror and was blasted to itty bitty pieces. Akatsuki. Itachi's eyes opened up and he looked at all of the Akatsuki. Did you manage to kill or delay them? Pain asked. No Naruto obliterated my fake body with one attack which he called Getsuga Jujishu and it was able to destroy my Susano with ease. Holy shit. Hidan said shocked as he had seen Itachi's Susano. We'll have to hope that Kabuto can keep the other group busy. Pain said. With Kabuto. Kabuto looked at his opponents and pushed up his glasses and smiled. You're a freak. Tentent shouted and she reached for a storage scroll on her hip. The scroll read Rikidu written by Naruto. This movement didn't escape Neji who went wide-eyed. She's using the treasure tools but she promised that she wouldn't unless the foe was powerful. Neji thought, then he looked at Kabuto. Then again our foe is a member of the Akatsuki so she's not underestimating him. Tentent pulled out the Bashozen and she swung the fan and a wall of flames fired at Kabuto who jumped out of the way and Neji charged in and unleashed a barrage of strikes and Kabuto liquefied and then attacked Lee with bone attacks but Guy attacked with his Taijutsu, Kushios, Edo Dense. Three coffins started to rise but Neji threw through ceiling tags and the coffins and they cracked and vanished. Nice try Kabuto but Naruto taught me how to counter Edo Dense. Neji said then the team of four attacked Kabuto and then Lee finished him off with the sixth gate and used Asaku Jaku. Akatsuki, they beat me. Kabuto said, some member of the Akatsuki, Hidan said, I couldn't use Sage Jutsu and they countered at Otensei so I couldn't overwhelm them but at my max I could have easily beat them. So neither of you could buy much time but with luck the final defense of the base will slow them down, Payne said. Just focus on the jutsu. Five hours later, the nine members stood in silence as the last of Shukaku's chakra entered the statue. Fucking finally. Hidan cursed. Certainly took long enough. Kisame noted. The Aichibi has been sealed, Pain said in his usual emotionless voice. Chiyobachan is on her way this will be interesting. 
Saucery thought to himself, we've got guests to entertain a eh, Saucery my man. Datera, I guess. Saucery Datera get ready for the guests and deal with them, Payne said commandingly. Hi Leader Sama. Datera and Saucery said then they jumped of the statue's fingers when a thought occurred to Datera. Hey Itachi you've faced the QBG and Chiriki before how we'll know which one is him? Datera asked. The one who will most likely kill you. Itachi said then he and the other holograms vanished, with Guy and the others. Guy and his team landed in front of a very large boulder with a tag with the kanji for forbidden on it. Is this the place? Guy asks Pakun. Gara is behind that rock. They've set up a barrier. What do we do? Ten Ten asked. We should break in. Lee says fire in his eyes. No. Guy says as he turns around just as Kakashi and his squad arrived. You're late Kakashi. Well we ran into some trouble on the way here. Kakashi says, Naruto glared at the barrier in front of them and recognized it. This is a Gofu Keke, which means that there are four other tags like this hidden not too far from here. Neji could you locate the other tags? Neji nodded and he activated his Byakugan and starts looking around them. After a few minutes of searching Neji calls out. I found them. One is on top of a boulder about 500 meters northeast of here. Another one is on a tree trunk in a gorge, 350 meters southeast of here. The third one is on a cliffside 600 meters to the northwest, the last one is 800 meters southwest of here. Those are the four locations. If that's the case then they're pretty far away. What's the signal going to be? Sakura asks. Why the hell do you care? He not a thought. No need wireless radios can traverse that distance. Guy says and he hands out the radios to Kakashi, Lee, Neji, and Ten Ten while keeping one for himself. We will remove the four seals surrounding the area if this is a race against the clock. Then my team's the quickest. We're counting on you. Naruto says. But remember they must be removed simultaneously or it won't work. Yosh Lee shall take the one in the forest. Yes, Guy Sensei. Lee says. Neji will take the one on the boulder. Gotcha. Neji says. Ten Ten shall take the one in the gorge and I will take down the one on the cliffside. When everyone puts their radios on Lee says. Can everyone hear me? Unfortunately his radio's mic was turned up too high and it gave everyone an ear-splitting sound to which everyone with the radio got pissed off at. Lee your mic is up too high. 1010 says pissed off. I'm sorry. Again the noise gave everyone a headache. Lee, Haley, Guy said motioning for him to turn down the mic which he did. I'm sorry. Dear Kami-sama he's an idiot Naruto thought. His heart is in the right place though. He not a response. The radio settings are good to go. Lee said. Right team guy. Guy says and then he holds out his hand and after a few seconds Lee held out his hand and placed it on top of Guy's hand and Guy smiled then looked at Ten Ten and made a grunting expecting noise and Ten Ten and she shook her head then stuck her hand on top of Lee's then Guy looked at Neji who had an expression that clearly said forget it and Guy kept making noises and eventually Neji gave in and placed his hand on Ten Ten's. Fight with the full power of youth. Fight. 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 And one more fight. Now. Then Neji and the others scattered to the winds. With Datara and Saucery. Saucery and Datara watched the boulder and eventually Datara spoke. They're slow very slow I wish they'd hurry up. I hate being kept waiting, Saucery said when suddenly the boulder shattered and then Kakashi, Sakura, Naruto, Hinata and Chio charged in and then Naruto unleashed a blast of chakra and he looked at both Datara and Saucery. If you hate to be kept waiting then I'll finish this quickly, Naruto said. Behind Naruto Sakura smiled as she looked at Saucery. Excellent with the poison I extracted from Konkuro I'll be able to kill both Hinata and Naruto and say it was Saucery. She thought. Datara picked up Gara and then flew off in a clay bird and Naruto's eyes widened in rage then drew Zenjetsu and ran off after him. Kakashi ran after Naruto leaving only Hinata, Sakura, and Chiyo. With Naruto, Naruto chased after Datara leaping in the air like it was a floor. Try this. Datara called and fired off a bunch of clay birds at Naruto who swung Zenjetsu's larger blade. Get Sugatensho. The black wave of Rayatsu fired off and he obliterated every bird and charged through the explosion and countered everything that Datara threw at him then he caught up Naruto grabbed Datara and locked eyes with him. Tsukuyomi. Naruto tossed Datara away and swung his blade. Enten, get Sugatensho. The black flame sliced right through Datara and he was ash in a few seconds. Naruto grabbed Gara and jumped toward a field and formed two hand signs. Ghetto, Rin Tensei no Jutsu. Green light surrounded Gara and he gasped as his heart started beating again. Naruto, Gara said shocked. H he's gone they stole Shukaku. I know they did but they can't stop me or our power, Naruto said warmly. I'll help you gain power stronger than anything you will imagine. Naruto formed chakra in his hand and a small egg made of golden chakra appeared. This is a chakra egg formed from pure positive chakra unlike Shukaku this chakra will always be with you and can't be stolen. 
Naruto placed the egg in Gara's hand. Dragons, a new age is upon us. Gara felt the power seep inside of him. In time this egg will hatch and grant you power that you never imagined. Naruto smiled at Gara. More shall join us Gara until then train, get stronger learn to protect those precious to you. Naruto rose to his feet and took Gara with him and started leaping back toward Hinata. With Hinata moments ago, Hinata walked forward as Sakura gulped in fear at the member of the Akatsuki faced her. Sasori shredded his cloak and revealed his puppet body. Hinata smiled at this and draw her sword laughing at him. You don't understand the power of my sword do you? This will be too easy. You wish little girl. Reduce all creation to ashes. Rujin Jaka. Hinata's sword burst to life and she cocked her head her smile widening. The flames burned the air around them and the Reiatsu Hinata was emitting caused Sakura to tremble even further. Your flame is strong but it won't stop me, Sasori said then he fired off a bunch of Senbo and fired off at Hinata who shunned put out of the way and then she sliced the next wave and burned them to melted steel. Ah but it very much will, you see, in my Shikai state my sword's flame burns at high temperature so melting Senbo is child's play. Hinata vanished again and sliced Hirako into pieces and burned the puppet to ash. Dang never thought I'd see Hirako destroyed guess I'll just have to use my favorite toy, Sasori said he revealed himself and Chio's eyes widened in shock. What is the meaning of this? He looks the same. He hasn't aged a day. Chio says shocked. What's going on? I thought Sasori left Suna over 20 years ago how can he be so young? Sakura thought shocked. What's wrong Granny Chio, are you so choked up that you can't even speak? Sasori asked. It's okay it's our first reunion in 20 years. Sasori, you, Chio said shocked. Wanna see what's up my sleeve? Sasori took out a scroll and started to unfurl it. This might be even more shocking. He was the hardest to kill and add to my collection. Then in a flash of smoke a puppet appeared. Th that's. It can't be. Chio says in fear. What? What's wrong? Sakura asks. That's the third Kaze Kage. The third Kaze Kage? Sasori started laughing at the expressions of fear on their faces. Well? Does this take you back, Granny Chio? Sasori asked. Lady Chio how can the third Kaze Kage? How terrible. Chio growled in fury. Then, it happened over 20 years ago. The third Kaze Kage suddenly vanished without a trace. We did everything we could but we never able to find him the most powerful Kaze Kage in history but we could never find him. Sasori it was you? And so what if it was? Sasori asked. You're telling me a retired old hag about to keel over is going to avenge him? How admirable. You've taken your eyes off me Sasori bad idea. He nod his voice and she sliced off Sasori's head and kicked it away. Ow that hurt, Sasori said as his head was reattached to his body and the sun daime kaze kage attacked with hidden blades and poisons which he not dodged or burned with fire and eventually got bored. Taimatsu. She swiped her blade and burned the puppet to ashes and laughed. Never thought I'd see that puppet destroyed either but I can see that you are no average enemy. Sasori ripped off his cloak and revealed his puppet body. If I can't beat you with puppets then I'll just deuce your flames with water. Sasori opened his palms and fired two waves of water at Hinata who sliced with her sword and dodged then sliced again. Water won't save you, I want to show you the power of my Bankai. The flames were suddenly extinguished and the water that Sasori fired again vaporized instantly. Zan Kanotachi, Hinata said and she looked at Sasori whose eyes widened in shock. Surprised the flames of my sword now burn hotter than the sun any water in the area has been vaporized, look. She pointed behind her and the lake that was there had evaporated. That includes the poison on your weapons. Good thing I have a sample of the poison hidden in a storage scroll. Sakura thought and she looked to see Chio had collapsed and she smiled sickly. Excellent now I all have to is wait for Hinata to drop her guard and then I can run her through with sword coated in the poison and kill her finally avenging my Sasuke kun and pin it all on the Akatsuki. Hinata then vanished and sliced Sasori down the middle and then he burst into flames and in a few seconds Sasori was nothing but ash. Hinata sheathed her blade releasing her bankai and the temperature returned to normal. Hinata smiled tossed her hair back then suddenly a sword pierced her gut. Called it, Kurama said, yes you did but it won't work. Hinata said, got you bitch, Sakura said triumphantly. I know you're a skilled medic so I hit a spot that can't be healed, Hinata laughed and pulled the blade out and looked at Sakura and laughed as she watched the wound heal instantaneously. My healing power is on par with Hashirama's I can heal wounds without hand signs and as for the poison that you coated the blade with I've already neutralized it with my chakra. Hinata punched Sakura and sent her flying back and she slammed it to the wall Hinata laughed and she threw several kunai and pinned Sakura to the wall. Be bitch. Hinata walked forward and raised her fist and opened her palm, Juken. Hinata destroyed Sakura's heart and then spat on her corpse. Join Sasuke in hell. Then she walked away laughing. Suna, Gara was looking at Naruto and they faced each other. I thank you for your help, 
You have rid the world of 2s rank missing Nin and saved me from the Akatsuki though that the cost of one of your teammates but she wasn't all that nice to begin with. So I wish you luck Naruto, know that Suna stands behind you, Gara said and then he held out his hand and Naruto grabbed it and they both smiled. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.